the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Coach Us Up Chuck Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. And this sports show on YouTube begins right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us. It is an incredible day. There is some breaking news. Jim Harbaugh is not the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. He is actually returning to be the head coach of the University of Michigan because no NFL team was ever interested in Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> That's what I, I, I don't know if I'm misreading this. We reported yesterday that this dude's going to be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings because there was numerous people yesterday that said Jim Harbaugh is going to be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. What we need to know is that this guy has great representation. Oh, yeah. This guy's agents, publicists, lawyers, whoever the fuck they are, letting every insider know that he's getting the job in Las Vegas, maybe. He's getting the job in Minnesota. Then Ian Rappaport comes on this show and he goes... Uh, I've never heard that Las Vegas was interested in Jim Harbaugh. And then yesterday, it is being reported that Harbaugh walked into that meeting thinking he was going to get the head coaching gig of the Vikings, and the Vikings did not view that meeting that way at all. Nine hours, they met. Who knows if they didn't gel, they didn't like him, or they just chose to go a different direction, that direction being Kevin O'Connell, Rams offensive coordinator, cannot hire him until after the Super Bowl, so congrats to him. Yeah, but also, congrats to this guy for being able to manipulate the media completely, whenever, however, whichever way he pleases. We all thought he was at the Raiders. That was a lie. We all thought he was at the Vikings. That was a lie. He's back in Michigan. Michigan's excited. I assume I would be as well. Made the college football playoff. Congrats to all parties involved. All right. right. Congrats, everybody. What type of bullshit this guy's spinning, though? I I can respect it. I can appreciate it. But I don't think anybody in the NFL wanted to take the Harbaugh cruise. I don't think anybody was really excited about it. There was a connection at Minnesota, I guess. I think Harbaugh wanted to get back into the NFL. I think he was sniffing around a bit in the NFL. But I don't think anybody in the NFL was really taking him any type of serious because they seen him shirtless, sleepovers Mm -hmm. with kids, and doing uh, his entire, you know, shit. Right. And maybe next year or maybe in uh, in the future he'll get back in the NFL. But whenever we start hearing that he's going back in the NFL, we got to remember it's probably not the NFL saying this. This is probably Harbaugh's people spinning a web of lies, which we have to remember when we hear all information going forward about not just him, but anybody. Yeah. The Toxic Table is here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connors here, at Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. Don Cowboys is here. That's the big break news of the day, right? It feels like that is the... Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I could... If... If the Vikings weren't interested, why have him in for a nine-hour interview? Well, I think somebody was interested. Mm -hmm. So somebody had him in. And then nine hours of dissecting and breaking down and doing that whole thing. And then on the other end of it, everybody is reporting that Harbaugh thought he had that job whenever he flew into Minnesota. And then I wonder how many hours into that he was wondering, like, oh... Wait, what's going on here? Maybe right? I don't, oh, you're just offering Maybe me. I don't have this job. Whatever the case, Kevin O'Connell is to be named the next head coach of the Minnesota Vikings after he completes the Super Bowl with the Los Angeles Rams. Sean McVay makes those play calls, so how will Kevin transition into the play caller and running an entire team? We shall see. Congrats to Kevin! Hey, Kevin! Hey. Never heard of him. Had no idea he existed, but he's going to become a head coach for the Minnesota Vikings. Good on him. Let's pivot, shall we, to a man who will be coaching in the Super Bowl against oh, Kevin O'Connell. Whoa. The next head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, the current offensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams, who will be battling wits against the man who is joining us now. Defensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals, a man who's been coaching football since 1989. <laughs> Loves the game. I believe, how's your family? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, defense coordinator for the Bengals, Coach Lou Arumo. Yeah. How's the family? How we doing, everybody? <laughs> hey, you pies on? Uh, 100%. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. How's the family, huh? How's the family? How's everything? Yeah. Uh, Gob- uh, 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 Italian from Staten Island, so true uh, true Italian. Oh, the Gabagool <laughs> is great, I bet. The Gabagool is great. Let's talk about um, let's talk about the Cincinnati Bengals and this team, obviously. And I know you're very busy, so we appreciate you joining us. I know you have to drive down to a university, get to the indoor facility today. I, I understand all of that. Uh, can't wait to see the work. In that second half of the Chiefs game, Coach, yeah, I think you got to go to your right. 
Okay. Now, now let's you're get, left. Let's get in the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I appreciate you. My kid, my kid, my two sons are going to kill me. One's a uh, freshman at West Virginia, so I had to get that in there because I know. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Um, yeah, cool. and uh, so they're they're they're, they're excited, but uh, yeah, we're we're going to head to practice here in about uh, twenty minutes or so. Oh uh, well, thank you for making time for us. Shout out to your Paisan kids, by the way. How's the family? Mm -hmm. Family's good. If they're in Morgantown, they're having a great time. A lot of Italians in Morgantown, by the way. A lot. Mm -hmm. New yeah. Jersey, New York. Uh, a lot of people travel into Morgantown. Whatever the case, let's uh let's talk about what you did last week. And I know you want to look forward and everything like that. But that first half and second half, and I don't know if it was schematic. I don't know if it was at halftime a little bit of a mindset change. What do you think happened in that second half? Uh, you obviously, I think you guys went from zone to man or man to zone or something like that. But what do you think it was as your entire culture to be able to flip that thing on the defensive side of the ball against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs there? You know, I think it started with that last play of the half, you know, with Eli Apple making that tackle uh, on the goal line. It gave us great confidence uh, heading into halftime, um, you know, because, you know, obviously, you know, I, I wasn't uh, <laughs> feeling so great about things, uh, you know, early in the game. And um, but, uh, you know, we just settled the guys down at halftime. You know, as you mentioned, it really came down to the guys just executing. We tackled better. We went to a little bit more man. Uh, we we, we uh, put a spy on him as opposed to rushing four. We dropped eight, as everybody said. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's you know how it is. It's the players out there making the plays. And, uh, you know, they, they did an outstanding job executing in the second half. Whenever you see film, obviously, of Patrick Mahomes and that Chiefs team, I assume it's a bit alarming. Okay, you've got Tyreek Hill, who's like fastest guy on earth. Jamar Chase, by the way, might be able to get him. I've seen him just pull away from people as well. So I guess practicing against those guys help. But whenever you look at this new style of offense where things are just fucking wide open, if football has changed completely, and it's no different with what you got going against next week in the Super Super Bowl. What is the mindset? You just try to get rid of their best players? You try to take away their best options? Or is like, how do you even go into a week to decide what you're going to do when these teams are just littered with weapons everywhere? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, you tried to, like last week, you know, it all starts with Kelsey and, and uh, Tyreek Hill. And the first time we played them, we did, uh, you know, held them to 60 yards total. And, um, you know, when we weren't as successful in the second half, we did certainly a much better job. But I, I think you have to go that way. You know, like as you mentioned this week with Cooper Cup and Odell and, and all the all the things that they have. So you try to make them play left handed as your best as best you can. And, um, you know, let let some of these other guys tr uh, try to beat you. Have you played against uh, and I should have done more research, I assume. I, no, I, good. I learned you're a Joe Philbin guy, by the way. Huh? Do you and Joe yeah. Philbin know each other a little bit? We, I... we do. We go way back, me and Joe. Me and Joe got a massage together in England. I, I don't know how close you guys are, but me and Joe. I can't. I can't imagine it was a. It was a just. I'm assuming it was a regular massage. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was a full body. Me and Joe. And I wasn't massaging him. He wasn't massaging me. We just so happened to be in the area. He's a great guy. But obviously, you've been around football a long time. When you see yeah. somebody like Joe Burrow just be able to come in, transition, have the moxie, the confidence that he had in college. It just feels like he has no idea about how big this all is. It feels like your entire team maybe doesn't even know how hard it is to get to the Super Bowl. Am I misreading that or is that just the confidence of the entire crew? I think you're on. I, I, I just think that, you know, these guys, you look at Joe and Jamar and, and T Higgins and some of these guys that are coming from LSU and Clemson and Alabama, all they do is play big games their whole careers. So uh, for them, and you and I know that this is a whole different set of issues, um, but but they haven't lost that confidence that they played with in those high level games in college. And it's, it's, it's really carried over to what they're doing now. So, I mean, Joe is just amazing, just his confidence that he plays with and how he sees the field and gets rid of the ball. And uh, man, is as accurate as uh, I've been around, really. Whatever you, you know, see, the entire leap that the entire team has taken. I mean, Zach Taylor was like four and twenty or so. I, I yeah. forget what his record was. He was four and twenty. The whole world seemed like uh, it was maybe crashing down. In the AFC North, the Browns were making a climb. Lamar Jackson's up for another contract. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got Mike Tomlin coaching them. Who knows what that whole thing? Could you guys have expected this? Was this expectations going into the year? Who sets that? The coaches, the players. Who really decides? Like, hey, we can go and do whatever we want to do. And why do you think there was such a belief? with all the shit that has potentially happened in the last couple of years? So I think it all started back in the spring when we, we uh, did a great job, uh, organization did a great job assigning these free agents. And, and part of the thing was, 
you know, we wanted to obviously get good players in the draft, get good players in free agency, but we also put a, a note on, uh, hey, let's 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 try to get these good players from winning teams. So Trey Hendrickson, Vaughn Bell, uh, the guys that uh, have been to playoffs, they're used to winning, um, you know. And then in the draft, the same thing. Hey, it's it's talent. It's what you think the player is first. But let's get some captains. Let's get let's get guys that are, have leadership roles. And to me, that's how you change a place. You you bring in guys that are used to winning used to doing things the right way and that'll bring the other guys along. And then you had, you had, you know, Burrow and Chase and what uh, those guys have done forever. You had that to the mix and, and uh, we had a good feeling all along. Uh, it's just been really special here as of late, for sure. You know, you guys are becoming like the hope for teams like the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. and other teams that maybe have like four wins and then they're able to flip it. From what it sounds like is you guys hit home runs on most of the guys you brought in there. Let's talk about Trey Hendrickson. What a, hey, what a monster this dude is. No gloves, throwback, old yeah. school, high motor. He's hurt. They're talking about the defensive line being beat up whenever you guys go in to take on Derrick Henry and the boys. Talk about Trey Hendrickson, what he has meant to the team in that D-line. Well, it's funny you say about the no gloves, because I think it was Cheeto Bay Awuzie that said, uh, Trey, man, you're out there with no gloves on. Huh? What, what's going on? You know, he's got his <laughs> fingers taped, old school. That's just his mentality. Uh, he, he's got, uh, as soon as he steps on uh, across that white line, uh, you know, he's what you want. He, he's looking to do one thing, and that's get to the quarterback uh, on pass downs and, and disrupt the run game on early downs. Um, you know, he's a quiet, composed guy off the field, but when the whistle blows, you know, you don't want to be uh, on that guy's bad side. So he's, he's brought a great mentality to the group um, and, and all those guys up front, Sam Hubbard, DJ reader has been a man oh, inside, yeah. um, you know, so it all starts with stopping the run. Uh, but at the end of the day, we also got guys that can get after the quarterback and cover in the back end too. Uh, before the boys have a couple questions for you, my last one here, Evan McPherson, have you ever seen somebody so con – that confidence he has is so amazing. And I just saw you smile there. This rookie kicker, and you've been around a long time, young rookie kicker, he just steps up and makes kicks. It's unbelievable. Did you guys know that in practice? Is there any shit talk in practice from the boys in training camp that maybe made you realize, okay, we got a guy here? You can just tell by the way the guy carries himself. I know I know he was on the show, I think, uh, a week or two back, whatever it was, but he just carries himself that way. Like, hey, listen, man, this thing's going through the uprights, you know, whatever I got to do. Um, and so, you know, we would give him some give him some stuff uh, in training camp and just to test him out as a rookie. But he, he just brushed it right off. And you knew, listen, we all know how this goes, right? Every Guys can make kicks, guys can make throws, but when the bright lights are on and the bright lights of the playoffs in the NFL, that's a whole different total animal, and uh, this guy has just been uh, unbelievably clutch for us. A couple 50-yarders in overtime, a couple I 50, mean, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's, <laughs> like, it's like, you know, back in Staten Island, just, you know, making a making a hoop uh, outside in the, in the schoolyard like I used to do back in the day. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Of course he used to do that. Uh, you're, you're t you have to take on Sean McVay and his offense. And Sean yeah. McVay is how, allegedly, how Zach Taylor even got a sniff because they knew each other. Is that type of um, commonality with your head coach and what you have to go against in practice obviously a massive advantage going in against the Rams? And do you see it that way or do they do things differently than what Zach does on a daily basis? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of car there's carryover, um, you know, and, uh, you know, having Zach and them spend so much time together, it helps. But, you know, at the end of the day, Sean's gotten uh, they haven't been together now for three years and everybody evolves in what they're doing. So while there is some stuff that we can use, uh, I think, to our advantage uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, Sean does an unbelievable job and uh, he keeps you off balance with formations and putting guys different places. So we'll have our hands full. Go ahead, Tom. Coach, you talk about bringing in free agents from winning organizations. One of those guys that I, I sorely miss uh, who had a huge interception against the Titans is Mike Hilton. Um, how do you resist bringing him off the edge every single play? Because I think he's probably the best blitzing corner I've ever seen. No, he reminds me when he doesn't – when I don't call it, trust me. Uh, <laughs> Um, but no, Mike's, Mike's an unselfish guy, uh, one of the best feels for the position in the league, you know, and that goes back to like when you're when you're not blitz and he's setting the quarterback up. They're so worried about him that he can bluff and I don't even have to tell him. He just does it naturally, knows when to do it, when knows not to do it. But uh, just super, super uh, uh, he, at the end of the day, you look at him, and you say, this guy's the best nickel in the league. And he, he is. He's tough. He'll tackle. 
Uh, he likes being in the run fits. I mean, what corner likes being in run fits, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, Mike is all those things, and uh, he, he is he has meant the world to us on defense. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Coach, Pat mentioned uh, talking shit to McPherson, but does that happen with Joe Burrow to, uh, during practice when you guys are, you know, trying to get each other going? Um, you know, you know, uh, not really. I mean, you know, during the season, we're not going against them very often. You know, certainly in training camp and in OTAs, you know, if uh, if a guy will pick a ball off or, you know, that's just normal football stuff. But this time of the year, I basically threaten any D lineman that gets close to him. On the <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep him. We want to keep him upright. Uh, I'd assume that's the case. And coach, we can't thank you enough for your time here in the middle of your busy preparation. Good luck in the bubble over there at the University of Cincinnati and safe travels over to L.A. We're all pulling for you. I uh, appreciate it. And, and thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Hey. Coach Lou Anarumo, you're welcome here anytime. How's the gabagool? It's just great, ladies and gentlemen, defensive coordinator for the Bengals, Coach Lou. Thank you. Yeah! That's awesome. Hey, guess who did the booking? Boston Connor. Oh, here we go. Hey. Here we go. Oh, Score one for the team. Hey, Boston Connor, oh, reaching out his yeah. hand. How's the gabagool? Oh, oh, my God. Hey, he sent yeah. me, Connor sent me a text. Stat. He goes, uh, a defense coordinator of the Bengals, I think I have a connection to. Would we want him on the show? Absolutely. And then he goes, I think he's, uh, and then he sends me the emoji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets point across. I said four of them. Uh, no, Spot on. Yeah, you did. And by the 100%. way, he is 100%. <laughs> he is 100%. That team, man, they're, they are. Him talking about how they shape the culture. Let's bring some captains in here. Let's get some people that know how to win. Let's go ahead and really make this culture very important. And that culture is the biggest X factor in any game. It doesn't get talked about enough. Like the Los Angeles Rams, obviously a lot of glitz, a lot of glamour. People talk about that culture as well over there, that it's like a Pro Bowl every single day, and they've come together. And obviously they're in the Super Bowl, so they're a tight-knit group because they've had a lot to celebrate. So it's easier to become friends with everybody whenever you're winning and everything like that. But this Bengals team coming out of nowhere, there is something about a team of destiny type feel yeah. yeah and they're only on the rise it feels like and coach lou i don't know i haven't heard his name for any job anywhere for anything i don't mm -hmm. think i've ever even heard that guy's name before no and he loves being there it feels like obviously how could you not be you're going to the super bowl but they're just only getting started it feels like i think there really is something to you know you've been talking about that like they just don't know what they don't know and you even look at like the defense the narrative kind of every single week in the playoffs has been like yeah, you know, like the Bengals are good. Their offense is good. Joe Burrow's good. But this defense isn't going to be able to hold up. They're banged up. Like their front seven isn't that good. And they just continue to win. And that kind of has been said every week up to this point. But I think these guys now, it's like, hey, we're in the Super Bowl. We are good enough to win this game. And, and I really think, like, they do believe that they're the better team, I think. And also, this is the new norm. Yeah, yeah. Like, remember after we uh, – I watched this on the uh, Kevin James, Sean Payton documentary. Oh, Pretty great good. Doc. Dang. I seen the exact shot that I seen walking into the locker room. On, I mean, it was a little PTSD. You know, not like actual PTSD to the people. Shout out to everybody that actually goes through real PTSD. Right. But for me, it was the last image before walking into the most miserable room I've ever been in my entire life was Drew Brees and his dumb baby yeah. after winning yeah. that Super uh -huh. Bowl up on a thing with the confetti falling. Mm -hmm. And that's how they let off, basically, the Kevin James, Sean Payton documentary on Netflix. Right. Yeah. So I did have a little PTSD last night. But also, when I walked in that locker room, by the way, not bad. Not huh? bad. Yeah, yeah no, it was pretty good. Not that's not bad. what you told me. No, yeah, I did. It was a nice deep dive into no, Sean Payton's what life. You said. What you say? What? I don't know what these two are talking about. What this did Connor say? He said, you yeah. know, hey, he got about ten minutes in, couldn't finish it. That's not true. Oh, couldn't oh, finish it. That's not true. Wow. Shit. I that's not true. Steaming pile of shit. Come on. That's it's, not true. It's a Happy Madison production, so yeah. it's not a steaming pile of shit. Bingo. Well, no, I agree. That's what Connor said. Well, I didn't say that. A lot of good jokes already. There's a lot of good jokes. There's actually like. Pretty dialed in jokes too, like yeah. good callbacks, subtle callbacks really? and stuff in there. I thought it was pretty high IQ writing, by the way. There was some stuff that was like, I, a lot of hotel what? humor. Was yeah. Shaq in it? Let's get out of here. A lot of hotel humor with the yeah. check in. Uh -huh. Oh my God. They missed. I've been there. They missed a couple, I yeah. think, that they should have added in there. There was a lot of good little moments, though, where there was some great dry, dry humor. Bill Cower makes an appearance. What? Uh huh. Coach Cower. I will say, Coach Cower, man that I love and adore. One of the worst actors I've ever seen. Oh, what? No. oh Coach yeah. yeah. Cower. What, guys... what, what football guy is a good actor? Well, it was a football. Sean Payton. Scenes. Sean Payton. <laughs> He's a great actor. Whoa, 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 whoa. We, we don't know about that. It might have been him. I don't know. They said maybe oh, it was him. Cower only That's knows how to be himself. Well, if this is, I mean, the way he was holding his phone. <laughs> 
he was <laughs> saw Bill Cowher was makes, holding his phone. Yeah, Cowher was actually him. in Waterboy as well. Well, he, which by the way, Bill Cowher fits in perfect stands, in yeah, that uh-huh. Happy Madison thing. But he had a Super Bowl ring on his head, and he was talking like this, and he was on a. I don't want to give too much away, but Bill Cowher is not supposed to be an actor. Well, Bill, Bill Cowher is Bill Cowher. That's uh-huh. cut, he has to do that because the one time he absolutely fucking leveled uh, Coach. What's his name on special teams? He separated his shoulders, so now he always has to hold it. Whatever the case, they should have had him on speaker, I think. Like, it would have been more <laughs> natural like this, but Bill Carr kills it. Just, he's Bill Carr. Uh huh. Whatever. Not bad. Okay. I don't think it was bad. If Bill Carr's in, I'll check it out. But it did remind me, uh, there's a lot of appearances. Right? Really? Just oh, yeah. Pop ins out of nowhere. Yeah, it's pretty good. I, honestly, not as terrible as you, like, as I would have thought. Yeah, exactly. Going okay. in, oh, this is going to stink. Okay. So I think that is where I was at. This is for kids, I thought. Uh-huh. Definitely is. But also not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Are you surprised watch. by how Sean Payton kind of let them depict him as, like, top five worst dad of all time? Or I mean, there were some situations that appears Sean Payton wasn't necessarily the greatest dad. But anytime anybody goes into the Hall of Fame, you know what they say. Say, thanks to my wife and my kids. I miss a lot. I am mm-hmm. so sorry. That, that, that was depicted in the movie. A little yeah. cool. But it was a good coming-of-age tale there at I don't give away any spoilers. It's good. It's a okay, good yeah. movie. Right. It's a great movie. Check good it out. Movie. I'll check it out. Anyways, they reminded me of the moment which I was a rookie and we just lost a Super Bowl to Drew Brees and his dumb baby. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot about Drew Brees through that movie last night, too. Sean yeah. Payton had a lot of, you know what Drew Brees does, you know what Drew Brees does, you know what Drew Brees does. So I learned a lot about Drew Brees through okay. last night's eyes. He was talking to these nine year olds, 10 year olds, whatever they were, the Warriors football team. But oh, yeah. Anyways, I, I remembered walking into that locker room. And I had the feeling when I was a rookie after we lost the Super Bowl, I was like, oh, boys, we'll be back next year. Mm-hmm. What are we even talking about? We won undefeated until we chose to lose. Team's all here. We're going to be good. And basically everybody was like, shut the fuck up. That ain't, <laughs> that ain't how this works. Unless you're the New England Patriots, this is not how it goes. So that feeling of, like, even in the Super Bowl being like, yeah, this is where I'm, I'm, we're supposed to be here. Oh, I'm going to be here 100 times. Like, this is no mm-hmm. big. First year, I'm in the Super Bowl. No big deal. I read the coattails of everybody else. This is just what we're going to do. Hey, say hello to your new life, Pat. You're in the NFL and you're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, that is how I genuinely felt. And not that Joe Burrow is a rookie, but kind of because he missed a lot of his first year. That feeling of, like, this is where we're supposed to be. This is how we're supposed to go is a weapon. Like, yeah. I, I think that is a weapon feeling. Not knowing what you don't know is such a, such a good thing to have. That's why they say ignorance is bliss. But I don't think it's ignorance. I think this team's just got the confidence and the moxie. We beat some great fucking teams. We just beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. They should feel very good. And the AFC North should be worried. Uh huh. You think Coach Lou Anarumo is worried about anybody else in the AFC North? Not a chance. Uh-uh. Not a chance. All I know is that organization has fucked up number one overall picks before. They'll do it again. No, this is a different time. Zach Taylor, Coach Lou Anarumo, uh-huh. yeah. and uh, running the scouting department. I mean, they're having the right ideas, the right conversations. Listen, we don't just necessarily need good players. We need actually culture in here. Let's attack and try to get captains of teams. Like, that's a, that's a mindset. Like, yep. hey, we understand we got to build from within. Not everybody does that. I don't think the Bengals have always done that in the past. Hopefully, they'll be able to get a goddamn indoor practice facility. Mm-hmm. Please. The, the AFC champion in the modern world yeah. <laughs> of $110 billion deals happening in the NFL has to hop in a bus in full pads and drive to the university in their city to go use their indoor... By the way, their indoor facility, the university in their city, not a Power 5 school. Nope. Yeah. It's not even a Power 5 school. <laughs> right. That was a big conversation. This isn't a Power 5 school. This isn't a Power 5 school. They're great. I love Luke Fickle. I love the Bearcats. But a school within the city who is not a Power 5 school, who probably profits at zero dollars is what they report, they have an indoor facility with another one on the way. And the AFC championship team... That is going to the Super Bowl, representing that city, has to go and use their indoor practice. Excuse me, I know you guys might have like, uh, I don't know, you guys got field hockey practice or something today. We're wondering mm-hmm. if uh, the Cincinnati fucking Bengals could use this because they got to play. <laughs> wow. and so what a fucking childish thing. That is unbelievable. And this is not enough. What? Coach Lou, did it not sound like we're fans of Coach Lou? Yeah. Love Huge Coach Lou. Huge fans of Coach Lou. Does it ever sound like we're not big fans of fucking Joey Burrow and Jamar? Big fans of oh. that entire team. Love the coaching staff. Cole Anderson, my former uh, personal protector, who, shout out, he was quoted in the athletic. Uh, shout, out. shout out. I haven't shout read the entire story, but I believe a lot of my former teammates were quoted in there and coaches. Thank you to everybody that took time out of your day to talk about me. I did not know that thing was happening, so that was a surprise to me, as it was to everybody else, but I appreciate everybody. Cole Anderson, he's a coach over there. Fucking love that guy. 
But they can't be hopping on a bus a week before the Super Bowl and driving down to a university and using their indoor facility. Get the team a goddamn indoor practice facility. What are we even doing? Oh, there's uh, there's 18 inches of snow coming. You know who doesn't have to deal with that? Aaron Donald, yeah. Matthew Stafford. Right. They don't have to do anything. Well, they get to live in L.A. Their weather's different. Well, that's why you build a fucking indoor facility. <laughs> yeah. So it's 70 and sunny every single day. Let's get to it. What are we even waiting for? Maybe with this new money and new spotlight coming to the Bengals because of the Super Bowl presence and winning is a good thing, they'll, event, they'll, they'll build one. But, God, yeah. damn, this is an embarrassment, I think. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen until ownership kind of changes hands either, right? I mean, it's not like – I mean, if they if they get to the Super Bowl, like I don't think they're going to be breaking ground on an indoor facility next year or after that. Man, I just – Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and the boys, you know, the next dynasty. Then you look at Derrick Henry, Tennessee Titans. You look mm-hmm. at the Raiders. You look at everybody else in the AFC North. Everybody in the AFC just go through the entire Mac Jones and them. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pro bowler. I mean, every quarterback is a pro bowler because people opt out, and it's normally like the 17th, 18th quarterback that plays in the pro bowl. And the pro bowl stinks, but I can't wait to watch it. Congrats yeah. to Mac Jones. Rookie. I mean, no and Making deal. the pro bowl and that entire thing. Everybody in the AFC lost to a team with no indoor practice facility. That's right. It's kind of messed up. And now they'll attribute, yeah, they'll attribute their success to, well, the way we did it. When it was cold out, we still went outside. Yeah, everybody does that. I, 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 everybody <laughs> fucking practices outside whenever it's cold. Like Vinatieri and I talked about it. We, we practice outside all the time. But it is nice to be able to get extra work in, maybe flip the lights on so you don't have to go down to University of Cincinnati and say, <laughs> hey, excuse me, can you get the uh, soccer team to use like maybe like just half the field because I got to get some extra reps in here because I'm thinking about something and there's no way to turn the lights on underneath the bridge of the practice facility that we're actually, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable that in 2022 this is a conversation, but let's not, let's not hone in on the negatives. No. Okay. Let's talk about the positives. Yeah. A team with no indoor practice facility fighting against their own ownership is in the Super Bowl. How about that? How about that? Let's get to a break. We can't thank Coach Lou enough for joining us. I hope he goes and wins that thing. Hell yeah. yeah. Me too. But I also would like to see Matthew Stafford have some success as well. So I'm kind of torn. I'm definitely team Bengals, I think. Just strictly because I think all of our ticket giveaways are going to Bengals fans who Mm -hmm. have zero chance of getting into that building with the tickets at seven thousand no, eight thousand yeah. dollars no not a chance nfc is wide open stafford will be back the feel of cincinnati it's a great way to look is, at it mm-hmm. is much where this is a gritty show and is, la is not a gritty time well it's fair depends on how you like grit as in dirt or grit as in toughness toughness yeah because i do believe it is pretty gritty dirty town mm-hmm. yeah. well yeah, oh, yeah. You got dirt that's grime i got snow. oh you're right grit and grime Mm-hmm. Okay, we're about to grit, not to grind. <laughs> exactly. I got it. Boom. Even though all those dudes that are over there, like Aaron Don's from Pittsburgh. Sure. You know, True. Uh, Matthew Stafford had to live in Detroit for 12 years. Sure. That's right. Cooper Cup. Cooper went Cup's to... not from the middle of fucking nowhere. Had no yeah. scholarship sure. office. I mean, the Cecil Hotel sounds like a pretty gritty place, yes. Grimy. Well, we are separating grit and grime. Cecil? Hey, I'll tell you what. You take some drugs, that is the place you don't want to go to. Yeah. No. Fair assessment. Yeah, you don't want to. I think sober, you don't want to be there. I, was probably not, no, I think not you would rather be on drugs when you go to Cecil so. than yes. be sober when you go to Cecil. Whatever the case, should not try to go to Cecil. <laughs> yes. Is that yeah, where we're staying Cecil. out there? Uh, yes. <laughs> the, yeah, I think. Are we near the Cecil? 12 rooms, yeah, in the Cecils. Perfect. Nice. Which, which, I mean, depending upon Seven the floor. Seventh floor. Yeah. We'll be back in four minutes. We are not staying at the Cecil. No. We're not? I'll cancel the reservations. Maybe you. Well, okay, maybe cool. don't. Keep one for calling. Yeah, please. <laughs> Cecil was where that uh, mass murderer from uh, Los Angeles serial killer was. Night Stalker. Yep. The Night Stalker was hanging out at. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just walking in with blood all over him. And yeah. they're like, oh, God, oh, do you need a yeah. drink? <laughs> do they have a sign when you walk in, like, home of the night? Well, that's because there's yeah, current or... day stalkers and night stalkers. Uh-huh. Oh, right. bingo. Yeah, I <laughs> believe that he was not the only murderer that slept yeah. there. No, oh, well. Day man, night man. From my takeaway. Oh. What was that movie? Uh, there was a movie that uh, maybe... With Jake Gyllenhaal? That's what I was thinking. Nightcrawler? Yeah, that one. Yeah. That he, wasn't he just was he's the reporter guy? Who was the singer? Is that singer guy? Jared Leto played the uh, the murderer. Remember him? Oh, oh the, the little things. things. Yeah. Was yeah. that about yeah. that? No. No. Night mm-hmm. Walker, I thought, was more about that. Crawler. Crawler. We're back in four minutes. <laughs> I would recommend the Kevin James, Sean Payton documentary okay. to watch. I agree. But I would like the expectation to be... Very low going. We are up. not getting a Scorsese. Okay. This is Happy Madison. We are not getting an award, I don't think. No, no, no. We are getting a Happy Madison hour and a half 
Let's go ahead and spend some time here, learn a little bit about Sean Payton. What's true, what isn't true, we don't know. What is true, we do know. Coach Chuck Pagano will be on in less than an hour. Here we go. And then Mark Wahlberg. Oh, what? Holy shit. Mark, yeah, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. The? Funky Bunch goes. Holy shit. What? Yeah. That's Mark awesome. Wahlberg. 205 Eastern. I love that guy. Here we go. Talking about uh, Uncharted, which is a movie coming out February 18th, which is formerly a PlayStation video game. Bingo. Which is about uh, basically seeking treasure and clues. And they go on an adventure. Him oh, and, uh, yeah. Him and Tom Holland are about uh, to go through oh, it yeah. to find mm -hmm. something sweet on Uncharted. It comes out February 18th. How did he fit us in his schedule? I have no idea. We will ask about that. Okay. We'll ask about Entourage as well. We'll ask about Uncharted. Mm -hmm. We'll ask about his backyard being a fucking oh, yeah. yes. awesome. I mean, there's Ooh. a lot to talk about. We don't have a lot of time, but we got Mark Wahlberg, 205 Eastern. Cannot wait to chat with him. Thank you for making time in your day, Mark and Mark. Well, I also ask about Spider-Man, who's not American. No, no he's not. He's from England. He's an English England. guy. Oh, I thought that was a different accent than English. That was an English accent? Yeah. Maybe Welsh? What are we yeah. talking about? Yeah, he has, yeah. He's from England. Yeah. I thought he was Australian. That sounded like Australian. No, maybe. unfortunately. From London. Yeah, he's from London. He's, from London. he's not from Australia. Oh, there yeah. it is a little deeper. <laughs> it's on me. Grandmother. <laughs> Sorry about that, Ridge Holland. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Back in four minutes. By the way, Ireland is not a part of the UK. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. We ain't doing that shit. Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Mm -hmm. Yes. Southern Ireland, Ireland. Yeah. The motherland. Is not from, not from the, kingdom. the UK. Mm -mm. Because Seamus in Ridge Holland, I almost said like, oh, this UK dominant team. And then I was told, Cole was like, do not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why? And he broke it all down. He was like, dude, dude they, Ireland is not in the UK. Okay, you fucking idiot. I'm like, I Googled it. That is a classic. Northern Ireland. Oh, okay. Ah, well. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. You know, yeah. geez. I am so it. sorry. You thought Rory, because he always... By the thought. way, the, I've been to Ireland, and I've actually uh, seen like, like the taxing on windows that Northern Ireland did to Ireland about the oh, Protestant yeah. Catholic thing. There's a, that was, That's very nasty over mm -hmm. there. So you have I, your Guinness license too, right? Yeah, I can pour a pint fucking with the best Hell of yeah. Wow. Nice. Fuck yeah. Not Michael Cole. No, no, no. Michael Cole can't pour a beer. Oh, yeah. We were, we were talking about oh. <laughs> He was dumping his PBRs into these glasses, and he was... <laughs> and then it would be like Just that much and like that yeah. much beer. Yeah. You got to put nose for yeah. it. It's yeah. old school. I'm old, old school. school. <laughs> Clown. Like, no, you can be old school, but still not just waste tilt the, all of Tilt the, the glass a little bit. <laughs> it was like his sixth one, I think, where he finally was like, is this right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back and forth. Answer some phone calls, one 833 on the 5 Iron Energy phone line. Thank you to Coach Lou. Thank you to Chuck Pagano and Marky Mark that will be joining us at 205 Eastern. Can't wait for today. Can't thank you enough for watching. Hope you're safe. The weather is banana land yeah. here in Indianapolis. Thank you all the boys for making the trip down here. Trip home is going to be a real pain in the ass. Let's go oh, ahead and yeah. take it easy. Mm -hmm. Take the long way home. That's Thank right. You we'll have to. We'll see you in four. Good see ya. Time. Cheers. It can be done. I mean, we signed Josh Freeman, Josh Freeman and Ryan Lindley, you know, on a brought them in for a Tuesday workout, signed them. They were in the meeting room on Wednesday. Um, you remember, Pat, I told the whole team, I said, hey, just mind your own F business. Everybody do your freaking job. Don't watch one snap of either of these guys. Do not watch <laughs> any of fucking practice. Hold on. No judgment. Trust our coaches. Trust, the, you know, our offensive staff. They'll get these two guys ready to go. And uh, sure enough, we went and beat the Titans, you know, to finish the season eight and eight. It was, it was one of the most memorable wins we had, you know, because of how we did it. I think so. And Josh Freeman and Ryan Lindley, obviously incredible people, and they came in. And you did say in your Tuesday presser, I've told this story before, where uh, we'll, we'll have a package for Pat McAfee, and I was like, wait a fucking minute, it's the last game of the season. Okay, we've lost <laughs> ten quarterbacks. There's no way I'm dying right now out there. But that was obviously a joke, obviously. Uh, but you bring in Freeman and Lindley, you making the proclamation to the team before they came in. Hey, do not watch. All right, just don't judge. No judgment. No judgment. Do not watch. And then me and Vinatieri, obviously, immediately upon hearing that, we're like, "All right, so we gotta go fucking watch this guy." And it was <laughs> yeah. bad. That first day of practice was bad. I mean, it was bad, bad. Thursday, you still banging the drum here. Hey, let's not judge. Let's just keep putting in the work. Let's just keep going. It started looking a little bit better. None of us could have expected getting that win on Sunday. What a! You're right. That is a very memorable game, and it's because of the adverse conditions that we're under. You know. Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you guys could have been at the workout on Tuesday, you would have said no freaking way you signed these two guys. Because you remember Josh Freeman, Josh Freeman had a cannon, right? So 
you know how Frog and T and those guys had set up at the different areas? Like if you're throwing, you know, quick game, you got a quick out or a slant, and then you go, you know, five step drop, seven step drop. He didn't complete one pass. He almost <laughs> threw the football. He almost threw the. He, he tore up their hands. Number one. Number two. He, he, the balls were bouncing off the indoor oh, nice. like BBs off a tin can. Almost threw a football through the wall of the indoor facility. <laughs> and then we go, okay, that's good. Josh, uh, Ryan, you're up. So then we get Ryan in there, right? Ryan's accurate as shit, but he's got zero velocity on the ball, right? It's taken forever. <laughs> and I'm asking T and Frog, because they know our two equipment guys, you know, what do, what do you think? He goes, man, that, that's an easy, easy ball to catch. I mean, it's barely coming in here, Coach. I don't know. If he's going to have to anticipate his throws really well. <laughs> so I'm thinking, holy shit. And I'm like, is there anybody? That's it. You know, Coney Island threat. Josh Freeman was playing for the Coney Island Thrashers at the time, serving, you know, soft serve ice cream at halftime for 250 bucks a game. And, and and Ryan Lindley, he was driving Uber. He was hanging out in New York City. He was driving Uber at the time. His girlfriend was training for the Olympics, and he was he was listen, in New York City driving, those great driving guys. Uber. Hey, listen, a lot of ricochet unbelievable. shots. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these guys, unbelievable. Hey, we got the goal on these guys, Coach. Oh. Honestly, they were very good, but they... ...to walk into any hall at the moon and go, Wish you were stay from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could cut ties with all the lies that we've been living in. And if you do not want to see me again, I will Uh -huh. How at the moon is just pianos usually. Oh, no, no, no. You wouldn't get it. Hey, welcome back to the Pat McAfee show here on this glorious February 3rd. I was getting a little bit too relaxed there. 2022. Can't thank you enough. Coach Lou Aruma. Uh huh. Came by, defense coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals to start the show. It was a great conversation. The boys are here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, at Tone Diggs. Uh, there's a couple things bouncing around the NFL that we have to cover for sure. Jim Harbaugh's return to Michigan. He will not be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, as we reported yesterday. Yes. Right. And we reported because everybody else reported that he was going to be the head coach of the Vikings yesterday. And what we slowly realized whenever it came to be this morning that he reached back out to Michigan after the interview yesterday and they were elated to say he was coming back to Michigan, we had to start thinking long and hard about what we say in these Mike phones on a daily basis because there was one time we we're like oh Harbaugh's gonna be the coach of the Raiders yeah. yeah oh my god Jim Harbaugh's leaving Michigan he's going to coach the Las Vegas Raiders then we have Ian Rappaport on and Ian Rappaport goes uh Jim Harbaugh might think he's coaching for the Raiders <laughs> but the Las Vegas Raiders ain't thinking that Jim Harbaugh's coaching for the Las Vegas Raiders so we immediately go Oh, so Harbaugh's a little full of shit. Maybe he's using this for leverage to get a negotiation to get a new deal at Michigan. I actually more power to him. How you doing? Keep him moving. Then the Minnesota Vikings job starts circulating around the Harbaugh name. And the Harbaugh media press is in full court. Hey, how you doing? Uh, he's going to the Vikings. He's going to be head coach of the Vikings. Congrats to Jim Harbaugh. He's going to be the next head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings are going to have Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is going to be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Then yesterday, after a nine-hour meeting in which Jim Harbaugh went in there thinking he was going to be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, is what everybody said yeah. that was around the meeting. Turns out he was not going to be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. There was a lot of people in that building, in that room that make that decision who said, we ain't hiring this fucking guy who's shirtless, having sleepovers, wearing cleats, walking around the facility. Facility. This guy ain't going to be our head coach. We're going to try to get somebody else. But that did not know, or Harbaugh did not know that going in. Nine hours, he tells Michigan, I'm coming back. Did he tell Michigan he's coming back because there's no other options? Did he tell Michigan he's coming back because he wants to come back and he wants a new deal? Or did Jim Harbaugh's people lie to everybody, including Jim Harbaugh, it sounds like, about jobs that were potentially never, ever, 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 ever going to be Jim Harbaugh's? Yeah, knowing Harbaugh from all this, you know, mumbo jumbo that has been going on lately, he probably said after the interview, like, you know, I thought long and hard about it. NFL sounds good, but I'm a Michigan man till I die. I can't leave this place just yet. We got to go win a natty, and they probably ate it up. 
Let's triple his salary. Let's, uh, yeah. At least give him a couple bonuses for if he makes it back to the college football playoff. And possibly Harbaugh is looking at another 20 years in Michigan. Well, congrats to Jim Harbaugh. Nice job, Jim. Jim. He, he, did, did. he did tell them, you know, this isn't going to be an every year thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. Why wouldn't you? This plan just worked to perfection. He's going to do this every single year until he He's either a gets a NFL, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, or it gets an NFL job. Congrats to Jim Harbaugh. Congrats, Congrats Jim. Jim. Might get a statue before he leaves. Welcome back to Big Ten football. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. His Big Ten. It's all bull. Why does everything got to be bullshit? Yeah, that's a everything. bummer. Why is everything bullshit? Especially when you ride the wave every day. Mm-hmm. It's like, <laughs> just like I, I guess said. there's some certainties in this entire thing. Sure. Okay, at the end of the day, the football and the field matters. Boom. But everything other than that, everybody's just kind of playing their own game. It's a shell game. Everybody's doing their own thing like this. How you doing? I want, I legitimately, and I don't know why after the whole Raiders, I thought Harbaugh was the guy in Minnesota yesterday. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Like full all in. Harbaugh's the head coach of the Vikings. This guy's back in the NFL. I'm excited to see what he does with that weapon. They got a lot of weapons over there. Mm-hmm. They got Kirk Cousins back. He'll be the perfect guy. You know, he'll he'll come slap Kirk Cousins in yep. his shoulder pads, and then he'll hit him in the head, and yeah. then he'll play catch with him. They'll do the whole thing. This could be awesome. Dalvin Cook's still there. Justin Jefferson, Thielen's still there. I mean, that squad is ready to go. Good for Harbaugh. Like, those were all my actual thoughts yesterday. He was already... It's all bullshit. Everybody's mm-hmm. full of shit. What's that all about? Well, and then the guy who does get the job is someone who hasn't been mentioned once the entire fight. It's like, well, Kellen Moore's getting another, uh, you know, he's getting another interview. they got a couple other guys they're interested in. They end up giving the job to a guy who has not been mentioned once for this job. <laughs> we have no it's idea just, who the fuck he no. is. Like, it, it was his plane not tracked? Was a Zoom call? Nobody had a clue that this guy existed. Sean McVay calls the plays over there. He's offense coordinator. I understand that people around the Rams organization know that this guy exists. Oh, yeah. Okay, I understand that he is probably a notable name. But when it came to being a head coach, we, we ain't heard this Hadn't motherfucker's heard name no. once. No. Not no. one time. Possibly. Congrats. Uh, I mean, hey. Yeah, KOC. Hey, KOC. I think they just saw a photo of him, and they are like, holy shit, McVay has Brandon Staley 2.0. Let's bring this guy in right Zach now. Taylor. So has Staley. That's a success story, we think? No, absolutely not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I don't think it's that he's, hard of a no. no. Not right now, though. Guy. Defensive guy. This guy's, you know, made in Sean McMay, uh, J- McVay's molding. He's an offensive guy, so it's basic. Kind of looks like him a little bit. A little osmosis. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was he possibly a D-back who what, sees the eyes through the offense as a, a, as a wide back? receiver? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what will... Please have some respect for Kevin O'Connell, New York Jets... QB back up to Tom Brady with yeah. the Patriots, Connor. This guy? Yeah. He was brought in what? to be the backup for Tom, yeah. When? Nice. 2008. Like years ago. Like Man, years. that was a good All year, right, too. All right, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin back O'Connor, backup quarterback. Was he, is he smarter or dumber than Josh McCown? Josh McCown's going to be the next big story. <laughs> Josh <Equally>. McCown. <laughs> What's that? Equally smart. No, I don't, this guy's smarter than Josh. No, Josh wow. McCown's smarter than Josh McCown's got the uh, direct line to the Lord, we think, as well. Oh, because of potential... Uh, God connection with uh, Easter mm-hmm. B. McNair. And the he whole doesn't have that job yet, dude. Well, John McClain, shout out. Shout out. John McClain has come out and said, uh, I wrote this in the Houston Chronicle this morning. Josh McCown's still on deck as NFL's next big story. What does that mean? Because everybody's going to be pissed when he gets a head coaching gig? Mm-hmm. Is that why it's the next big story? Or is he the next big story because he's going to be a good head coach? Either way, John McClain doesn't mince words, or mince words here. He knows what he's saying, how he's saying, why he's saying it. Josh McCown's going to be the head coach of the Texans, right? Yeah. He's had this job for 18 months since they hired Cole. So Kevin O'Connell, guy who we have obviously heard of, backup quarterback for the Patriots and the Jets, and he's offense coordinator over there. The Rams are in the Super Bowl. Okay, so yeah. a lot of success, obviously, he's had. Josh McCown's going to get a head coaching job. This this is going this is going to be a conversation. This is going to be a conversation about everything else going on in the world, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Well, just, big time. Just big big time. time. Just seen a report about a half hour ago. I just saw it that uh, Flores is still in line to be a candidate for that at Houston job is what she's reporting. Yeah. I don't okay. know, man. I Listen, I yeah, hope. I, I hope that is the case. I hope that is possible. I hope that's feasible. But nothing in the track record of the NFL has told us that if you sue them, you end up in a good spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just, I, I don't. But be who you can afford to be. Be who you can afford to be. Antonio Brown plans on playing next year. He's suing uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFL right now. He's planning on playing. He's very good at football. I don't see how a team will bring him back. 
but the motherfucker can catch and run faster than anybody. True. Yeah. And so if a team gets desperate and they already know him, maybe he gets a job. Brian Flores currently opening a class action lawsuit, being the name behind it, against the NFL. Hugh Jackson has come in support of Brian Flores, talking about his time in Cleveland when Jimmy Haslam, uh, the owner of the Browns, set up a four-year plan. And I believe in the four-year plan, and this is me just listening to Hugh Jackson speak about it and trying to figure it out. In the four-year plan, I think Jimmy Haslam planned on having zero success in the first couple of years. Turns out, they did not. Yep. They had next to no success. Hugh Jackson heard that those plans. This is what he said to Sports Center L. Duncan last night while he was chatting about having proof that what brought, happened to Brian Flores in Miami, where he was being told he could get an extra hundred thousand dollars per loss, was similarly situations happening in Cleveland with Hugh Jackson. Jimmy Haslam laid out the four-year plan. First two years they were supposed to be terrible, then they were going to be good. Hugh Jackson said it wasn't until a couple of years into this four-year plan where he realized that no coach has ever survived having next to no success, and he was probably going to be the fall guy for the four-year plan for the two years. So then that leads incredible conversation to start about how, oh, they hired Hugh Jackson just to take the fall, basically, for the first two years of the Browns being terrible. Then they started investing in the team afterwards, and that is how he felt like he was being paid to lose, just like Brian Flores was being offered $100,000 per loss. Allegedly, Cameron Wolf, who works for the NFL Network, I don't know how many more times we're going to see him on the NFL Network. <laughs> uh-huh. He has reported that he found um, witnesses that heard Chris Greer tell Brian Flores of the $100,000 bonus for every loss, and Cameron Wolf. Once again, who reports for a network that Stephen Ross owns, the NFL Network. He is saying uh, that if proven, obviously the integrity game of the game is in question, and the Dolphins have vehemently denied these allegations. Stephen Ross has put out a quote about how this is defamatory, defamatory, this is slander, this is libel. Mm -hmm. Uh, He says, with regards to the allegations being made by Brian Flores, I am a man of honor and integrity and cannot let them stand without responding. I take great personal exception to these malicious attacks, and the truth must be known. His allegations are false, malicious, and defamatory. Is that how you say that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. We understand there are no or there are media reports stating that the NFL intends to investigate investigate his claims and we will cooperate fully. I welcome that investigation. I'm eager to defend my personal integrity and the integrity and the values of the entire Miami Dolphins organization from these baseless, unfair and disparaging claims. Stephen Ross just put out a quote that is filled with things for litigation on his end as well. Slander, libel, defamation of character. There is a lot of setup in the quote that was sent back from Stephen Ross to answer Brian Flores. Flores is two lawyers. One of them I know is already doing their own interviews yep. and going around about everything. Fascinating situation. Obviously, something that needs to get figured out. I think we can all see that. We all understand that. The NFL has instituted the Rooney Rule and now a follow-up to the Rooney Rule to try to take, a, uh, try to take steps in correcting this all. It's going to get ugly out there. You see, you got a B lawsuit. Yep. yep. John Gruden lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ryan Flores class action lawsuit who also has Hugh Jackson in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's um the Washington football team stuff is going like back to court. Yeah. Deshaun. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun. Yep. There's a lot right now that's going on. The NFL is on the out, like, just doing one of these yeah. things here. I mean, it sounded like a counter from Ross as, as well. Yeah, but this this comes immediately after the St. Louis thing with Kroenke, where Kroenke made a counter, and then the NFL told him, we're yeah. done with this. Yeah. Yeah. We are done. You're paying for this, and we are done with this. I'll be excited to see how this all unfolds. They're going to have to do something. There's a lot of smoke. There's obviously a situation that has to be handled and fixed. We can all see that from the outside looking into the NFL. How will it go? Nobody knows. Other news around the NFL. Bill Belichick has congratulated Tom yes. Brady. Yeah, yeah, he has. Uh, didn't he? Uh-huh. Big time. Bill Belichick came out and wrote an entire quote about Tom Brady, and he had to do something similarly similarly a couple years ago, so I assume this did pain him to do this oh, yeah. again. Uh-huh. But Bill Belichick has nothing but the utmost respect for the game of football, and I assume Tom Brady, especially after what he said here. I am privileged to have drafted and coached Tom Brady, the ultimate competitor and winner. Tom's humble beginning in professional football 
football ultimately ended with him becoming the best player in NFL history. Tom consistently f- performed at the highest level against competition that always made him the number one player to stop. His pursuit of excellence was inspirational. Tom was professional on and off the field and carried himself with class, integrity, and kindness. I thank Tom for his relentless pursuit of excellence and positive impact on me and the New England Patriots for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Fascinating words from the wordsmith that is Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, drafted. Very, very funny. He snuck that in there. You know, well, I am the one who drafted this guy. Let's not forget pick that. Pick one Nobody else wanted him. Uh, it was me. You know, it always made him the number one player to stop. Okay, uh-huh. we knew that as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. And everybody's talking about a one-day retirement thing. I guess that is actually gaining some steam. It's been reported. It's been uh, debunked. It's been reported. It's been debunked. Yeah. Let's assume something's going to happen between Tom and the New England Patriots at some point. Yeah. N- no matter what, this year he they'll retire his number and put him in the Patriots. Patriots ring of honor no matter what now I don't know if he'll retire as a Patriot just because it seems like he's kind of done and he's just putting this behind him because Darlington and Schefter already stole his thunder for once and he wow. you know put out a pretty sweet uh, video today that seemed to be the one that we thought might have been coming earlier on but it was only a one minute video just a quick little highlight you know had some Mac Miller playing in the background you know it was, a very, it was very nice Shout class out a. Mac Miller. yeah it was a good video there yeah it was only a minute long yeah watch it 15 times already but you already knew he was retired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that's why kind of was, spoiler alert from Darlington and Schefter. Yeah, right? they really did. Because if he put that video out with, like, I'm done at the end. Tears. Tears. Waterfalls. Yeah. yeah. I'm crying. That's why I'm trying not to give any spoilers away from that Kevin James, Sean Payton documentary on Netflix. Yeah, because right that might spoilers happen. Yet? That's good. Huh? When can we do spoilers then? Probably a week or so. We, okay. we mentioned it now, so we'll Just give it a week. Sure. Yeah. Is huh? Sandler actually in it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a spoiler, dude. Almost Come tears. On. Almost tears at the end. Uh, yeah. Really? Moved you. Yeah. Connor Taylor. Let's, go to, let's go to Jacob in Colorado. What's going on, Jacob? How's it going, boys? Keep it going. Good, man. Keep it going. <laughs> keep, keep it going. Yes, sir. Um, so I got a question. In recent year, I guess it was what, April of last year, they just made it to where NFL players are no longer being tested for marijuana. So my question is, I'm not sure if you know or if it's uh, more common. Are players smoking before games or even after games, or is that common in the locker room with like edibles or anything like that? Yeah, great question, Jacob. Yeah, uh, they are still testing for marijuana. They lowered the amount that you're allowed to. Um, they lowered the amount that they're testing for a fail for. So you can. I guess guys can smoke closer to the testing day and have a less amount in their body and still not be a, or they they raise the amount you're allowed to have in your body or something like that. They're still testing for it. There's no suspension of games if you uh, test positive for marijuana anymore. I still believe you have to go into the substance of abuse program. Mm. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't, I, it hasn't gotten to the point where the NBA has. The NBA just doesn't even test for it anymore. No. We are all hoping that the NFL stops testing for it completely. I do believe it is still a part of the test. Now, when it comes to when guys smoke, how guys smoke, what guys do, uh, the edible thing is very recent, I think, with you know more edibles being made. There was somebody on each team that was normally designated or asked to potentially bring, you know, baked goods that might have some things in them. Sure. I knew those people that did those things, and that was always a very, I'd say 65% okay. of the NFL. There's been reports of like 90, 89, 80%, 70%. I think like 65% of the NFL, from when I was in there, this is from my experience, probably smoked. Mm-hmm. Now that edibles are much more common and they are great for your body and they're CBD and THC edibles that with arthritis and everything feels better, I'd assume that's up to like 70, 75, yeah. mm-hmm. Climbing. maybe 78%. Uh, but everybody knows that you got 420 is when the annual drug test happens. That's April 20th. And uh, <laughs> Roger Goodell doing that is fantastic. But we hope marijuana and inevitably ends up off the test list completely. Well, and in seasons, like a Russian roulette of drug tests, right? Like that, you don't know if you will get drug tests. No, the yeah. annual drug test for street drugs is only once a year. Okay. So you only get tested for marijuana from 420 to the end of the first week of training camp. And if you get tested on 420 or 421, you're good until next 420. Yeah. So everybody's hoping they get tested on day one. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're a doofus and didn't get clean for that day, then you're <laughs> for the first week of training camp. There's a lot of games that are played there with your urine and your body. They get it figured out. Hour two is on the other side. It's as simple as this, okay? You gotta have fuck you in the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you don't, you're, you're missing something. It's that simple, right? 
Some guys, talented, but Sid will stand in there with anybody, nose to nose, and go, fuck you. Yeah. 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 And Hell yeah. We don't have as many of those guys as we did 10, 15 years ago. They like their, their skills, you know. Lose the game 7-1, but my goal got on Instagram. It's a good day. <laughs> oh, Kip. Oh, no. <laughs> no. You're not wrong. No. It's not about Instagrams. It's not about likes. It's not. It's just about winning. My so much, over here. So much of the bullshit. bullshit. I'm allergic to bullshit. <laughs> I'm allergic to the bullshit. I was coughing earlier now. My nose is running. <laughs> Get this hey. son of a bitch! Uh, what the uh, hell is uh, What is that? Uh, 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 Watch uh, uh, the show with this fucking... prick on the screen. <laughs> You're right. The you Bruins stink, but not as You're bad right, as Foxy. Daughter. Thank you. Daughter. Not as bad as Fox. Get you him out. I'm out of here. Get him out of here. Take him out of here. What is? How are these two? Hey, here? don't worry. The fucking Kings just went up two one. <laughs> 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 You suck, Foxy. That's gonna be Connor, Foxy. Connor, so much. Steven in Nashville. Enough. What's going on, Steven? Hey, hello. Pat, you guys can hear me. the worst call we've ever had, Stephen. Oh, my God. <laughs> so mean. Stephen. Hello? Stephen, yeah. it's the worst call we've ever had. So much dead air there. <laughs> Yo, Pat, can you hear me? Yeah, keep it going. <laughs> Hello? You know what you say? I was going to hit him again. What? Yo, Pat. No, Pat? Pat? Hey, Pat, can you hear me? Stephen does not deserve this. <laughs> Steven, what's going on, dude? How's it going on, Steven? Sorry, your phone would shut. Pat McAfee, can you hear me? Steven, Steven, you there? Pat, can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> Is there a cup of string? Steven! Yo, Pat. Pat, can you hear me? Steve? Hello? Steve! Pat! Hey, there you are. Hey, Hello? what's going on, Steve? Hey, Steven, sorry about that. I think we're having connection issues. What's going on, man? Hey, sorry, man. I didn't know if that was me or if you were trying to talk to another guy. And then, and then I didn't hear you guys. Steve! Yeah. Hello? Oh, we lost him again, I think. Shit. Pat! Can you? No, I don't. Pat, can you hear me? Steve, Steve, Steve. Hey, Steve, there you are, Steve. Pat. Steve. Pat. Hey! Pat! Steve, 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 I see. I always say, being successful is like being the homecoming queen. All the ugly bitches hate you. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, that's the truth of the matter. When you're successful, you're going to have built-in enemies. And then the more successful you become, the more enemies come at you. So I don't want to give them access to me because I'm not that guy. If you said something mean to me, I gotta say something mean back to you. When I was younger, I used to fight all the time. I'm too old to fight now, but I can still verbalize some insult, 
Yes. And like, if I let's say if, if I'm out drinking, because people know I like to drink, if, if I'm drinking my vodka or some tequila and you insult me, there's a 100% chance I'm going to say some shit back at you. <laughs> and the problem with being famous, Pat, and I don't like calling myself famous, but you it are, is what yeah. it is. Yeah, people can say anything they want to to me and nobody gives a shit. But the first time I go crazy on their ass, yeah. I'm going to get crushed. Yeah, you're not classy. You're not professional, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a so gentleman. I choose not to let people have access to me in that situation. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show, Hour 2, on this Coaches Up Chuck Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. Shall it begin right now? Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. If you enjoy the show, please be a friend and tell a friend. If not, just act like it never happened. In about one hour, we'll have Mark fucking Wahlberg. Oh, yeah. let's shit. Go. That's right. Promoting Uncharted, a movie coming out in yes. uh, February 18th. And we saw a little trailer a little teaser we're supposed Whoa. to watch the actual thing we're going to get a screener like big time shows get and then an ice storm came through what are you gonna we do? couldn't see it so i can't wait to chat with him about all things going on in his life i have a lot of questions at ty schmidt at boston connor at tone Diggs is here chuck pagano will be joining us in about seven to ten minutes and live from an attic in ohio a super bowl champion a college football national champion a Ryder cup champion and COVID survivor aaron Rodgers' best friend aj hawk AJ, how you doing, dude? Oh, good. How you doing? Excited about uh, Mark Wahlberg. That's awesome. Super pumped. Mm -hmm. Hey, super pumped. We got a lot of questions. Obviously, Uncharted is going to be unbelievable. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, no question. No qu He only makes hits, doesn't he? Yeah, oh, bangers mm -hmm. only for Mark Wahlberg. That is a factual statement. But also, I mean, you and me, we grew up playing that game. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it was mm -hmm. so much oh, fun, yeah. that video the game. The best. Every oh, day. Every day, dude, we'd be like, where's the PlayStation? Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> Let's get Uncharted. Find start, the treasure. We go on these, uh, you know, trips around and finding clues. And oh, yeah. Sick. Dude, a lot of gunfire. Oh, uh -huh. my God. It's so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was. That's what me and AJ did. That's why we made it to the NFL. So can't wait to actually thank Mark Wahlberg. Thank you, Mark. For uh, thank you, Mark. bringing back what made me and AJ Hawk successful in the sport of football. Uh, AJ. We all know that you're down there at the Kentucky Derby with Aaron Rodgers. Okay, we all know that you're out there at birthday shenanigans with Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. We all know that every Tuesday on this show you're making inside jokes with Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. So when Aaron Rodgers, okay, buys something down in Nashville and he's down in Nashville and the entire world goes, holy shit, is Aaron Rodgers going to the Titans? I think there's only one person to ask about it all. AJ Hawk, what the hell's going on? Is he moving to Tennessee? Uh -oh. Why is he buying stuff down there? What is going on with Aaron Rodgers, AJ Hawk? So what is what is the story? That, what, what came out that I missed? Oh, so he's trying to figure uh, out what all he's allowed to say. Uh, wow. No, what happened in Nashville? Believe it or not, guys, it's multiple snow days in a row. Wife out of town. I've been plowing on my John Deere all morning trying nice. to keep kids alive. Hell yeah. Hell so, yeah, so, yeah. There's a lot of ice out here. All right, so we'll let you know what the world already knows so you're not giving any more information because why would you want to do that? You know, because yes. So he's going to – wait, so they say he – he just bought a property in Nashville. Oh, so that know. was reported. Yes. 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 Okay. Reported. When did when did he purchase this property? Okay. Well, the, the thing is yeah. exactly. So okay, the timing I think matters here, guys. Okay. Did he well, just listen, buy it I'm right asking now? you, I didn't well, break I this news. Did he, news. Oh, oh, yeah. did he just buy it now, down. or did he buy this? You know, I don't know. Months ago. Well, you tell us. I don't know. 
Yeah, you do. Yeah, it, when was it? Does I'm it matter? saying check the date. Check the date if you think he just bought it. Does oh, it matter? Okay, so yeah, does any of this matter? Why do you think he bought the property in Nashville? Do you, do you ever talk about that? Is it because he wants because to he go? Because he has to... a billion dollars and he wants to live in multiple locations. He's a billionaire? Okay, so what we're saying is this means nothing in, in your eyes, just the fact that he... There's re- other people that live in Nashville that are professional athletes. There's nice areas in Nashville mm-hmm. all over the place. So if, if Aaron has raw land in Nashville without a house on it, how does that mean he's going to the Titans? Now he is close oh, with Braves. He loves the head okay. coach in Brable. The Ooh. Titans are in the AFC, so all of that matches up. Ooh. Okay, so just quick follow up. Raw land is the property because I did believe I do believe it was pitched as like a house, maybe. Yeah. It was assumed to be a house. What do you mean by raw land? I don't did he buy a house? No, just it did just say property, but I think everybody assumed that it was a house was also there. I thought. I don't know. I honestly don't know. There might be. Uh, okay. Uh, no, he said sorry. raw land. It sounds like he bought back. some raw land. Yeah. Out there. He bought some raw land. Okay. Well, we appreciate that. That is becoming a story, though, as is everything that happens with your best friend. And you're saying there's no reason for us to look into that any deeper or anybody else to wonder or speculate on his Oh, football. no, you could. You should. You should jump into it. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, people, you, you don't think that that house is necessarily a property, is raw land. <laughs> Thank Whatever you. that means. Thank you. You don't think that raw land is any indica- indication of what his football career is going to be? If if Aaron has any land down in Nashville, I don't think he got the land with any intention of thinking about football. It has nothing to do with football, I believe, okay. if he has anything. Okay. Please, please, put to that on, uh, please put that on the ticket. Okay. Thank you, AJ. Thank you. So is he building it could, an that, immunized that, center then? Or? Well, we that doesn't mean it can't, though. That doesn't mean all of a sudden, say he goes down there, he's like, oh, this is cool. I like Nashville. Live music. Hey, Raves, why don't you call the pack? Work on a trade for me. That could happen. Oh, 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 so, so hold on. Put that on the ticker as well. Although right. it is raw land, whatever that means. But then actually, I think he might retire too. So put that on the ticker as well. Oh, oh shit. shit. What do you know? You don't know anything except for a little bit. And we got to kind of piece together about what <laughs> I don't even do. know a little bit. No, I don't no, know. You do. You no, just yeah, said, land. You just said raw land. You, I don't raw jump land. at dumb stories where people think like they, they put him in locations instantly. Like, oh, here it is. This is happening. Well, I will just say this. I will say this. Nashville, you should know. If you see him around town, mm-hmm. there is a chance via his best friend that you could win him over and him be like, hey, I'll come. Maybe you guys should have a parade for him right yeah. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe they should have a parade like down Broadway for him. Make, make him feel, get him in there and Tootsies. <laughs> yeah, get him playing get him a, guitar. Get him a guitar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get him playing a little bit. Make also, him... Yeah, he, he plays guitar as well. That's another tie to Nashville. Oh, man, this is he looking does. like Nashville is the spot. What if we see... I didn't know this coming into the show, but yeah, like Bullshit. we're putting him there. Well, we're not. Everybody else is, yeah. but it sounds like we're helping. Maybe we should. Yeah. No, I mean, we, we are. Sure. No. We those, got a hammer to the nail, it sounds like. Those I mean, what people, about Ryan Tannehill? Those people would not do that to Ryan Tannehill, yeah, first and foremost. And secondly, uh, we're talking... Like that. No, no. Like no they, would, yeah. Yeah. they wouldn't. Yeah. Like they wouldn't. Yeah. They love Tannehill. They love Tannehill. Oh, oh, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. He's born in Milwaukee. Just real quick, I would like... Who? Tannehill? I don't know. I made that up. Oh, God. This program. This program. It's raw land. He's not planning on doing anything with that. I will say... Oh, yeah, he is. He wants to watch training. Corn pop up in rows. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Knee high by the Fourth of July. Yeah. 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 That. Aaron Rodgers that understands that. Oh my God! What if he takes the track? Another, 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 another round. Another round. Another round. You think he bought a, you think he bought a farm? You doesn't said raw land. What does that mean? We don't know what that means. That could be a half an acre. That could be five million acres. Doesn't need a green That's house. what you're saying yeah. to us. That's why I'm very. Yeah, I'm saying there's a big range. I don't know. I don't have. Details. You don't know. No. A lot of raw land on farms. We know from AJ he has a greenhouse, and you don't need a greenhouse down Nashville. The whole thing's a greenhouse. Yeah, the, it gets cold. Though. Uh, it's snowing there. Yeah, it does get cold. I think it's I pretty think chilly. The growing but... season's twelve months down. I there. guess. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. You never know. With well, a greenhouse, it is though. Well, if Rogers moves down there, that place will be hot. It was that much. Well, <laughs> Nashville has been building for a while. They got a lot of cranes down there for like the last 10, yeah. 15 yeah, years. True. It's been blowing up. You know they. They have been in the playoffs for oh yeah multiple years in yeah. a row. They got Derrick Henry in the backfield, AJ division. Brown and mm-hmm. Julio Jones, who he has talked about yeah. before. Uh huh. In the AFC South, not great no. right now. I mean, nope. aside from the Colts, well, well that, they, they're not. I mean, they're not a playoff team. So. Yeah. <laughs> what? Who cares? Why'd you guys just well at the same time like that? <laughs> well, we because know. I don't think he's looking at the you know the map of the NFL and saying, oh shit, I can't go to Tennessee. The Colts are Carson Wentz is. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. I don't, he might. He might be. When did he buy the property? 
I don't know. You I don't think do. He, I don't think he. Uh, I think it's safe to say he didn't buy it yesterday or five days ago. Oh, that's a start. Oh, okay, but maybe he bought it whenever he was first starting to think of like where he wanted to go. Yeah, he was in yeah. Hawaii jumping off waterfalls, and he was like, "Give me some property in Nashville." I heard it's awesome while they were singing Taylor Swift song. Yeah. Oh, who's? Oh my God, because Taylor Swift is down there. She's oh, Nashville. You're right. Oh, is this all a plan? Has this been a plan all along? Wow. What does Vrabel know? What does this son of a bitch know, Vrabel? As, as long as he's breaking ground in deer equipment on that raw land. I mean, if he wants to go move to Nashville, that's fine. He ain't playing for the fucking Titans. What? No. The Titans need. Did the Titans have a Super Bowl? I don't think no. so. they got, they got to one. The that, Super Bowl, yeah. That was the one that got beat, right? Michael was Super talking Bowl. about. But it. the Rams, yeah. Mike Jones. Nah, they didn't win. So they never won a Super Bowl. Oh. What about as the Oilers? Did they win one? I don't know. Mm. Maybe, maybe they had one battles year. with the Steelers, right? Oilers and Steelers used to have some epic clashes, yeah, they right? Did. I just uh, remember that from when I was a little, little kid. I don't I think, think they have. They were in the same division. So, I mean, that would make sense if you're a guy who, you know, you go to a place that's never won before. Yep. No, the Oilers have never even appeared in the Super Bowl, dude. Colts have won. Sorry. Well, Packers have as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it's Tennessee. Oh, my God. What Did, did it all shit. just come together? I was coming into this show expecting us to be like, ah, this is – I thought AJ was going to say some things. I didn't know there was still – like, I didn't know we were jumping to, like, this instant speculation still with Aaron right now at this point in the year. Yeah. Well, what? it wasn't – I mean, what the fuck are – where have you been? I mean, out there, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, dude. Where have dude? you been? Dude, wait, what do you mean? Oh. What, this happened, what, last night? Yeah, the guy broke news. He yeah. was actually sitting in his house. He looked like he was on a yeah, uh, a podcast of some sort, but they had a ticker. It was pretty well produ uh, and produced. And what did say? He, I don't know. Can we get the clip? Let's just get the actual clip. I think we can find I it. I know he's here. just a normal guy to you because you guys are buds, but it's Aaron Rodgers, so it's news, AJ. Yeah, yeah. and he's on the move. No, I'm saying sometimes, like I that I consume stuff like in bunches. Like here, okay, boom, I, all of, I can consume like a lot of content. I can see stuff, and then it might be another Gary day v. before I get to do that again. Oh, so you're like, okay, give me all the Chuck Berry stuff, <laughs> boom. boom, and then you're like, all right, I'm gonna go plow the land. Yeah. Then yeah. you go outside, then you come back, you're like, boom, Jeff Zucker did what? Bang! Bang. Bang. This entire right, thing. Who's that? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you know, your favorite anchor. Yeah, I got it before you, pal. How about that? I got it before Congrats. you. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbit is. So can we run this real quick? Can we can we run this? Can we call Chuck back? Ask if we can call Chuck back. Chuck, we got to figure. Chuck will actually have a good take on this, I believe. Oh, we should run this so that AJ. Well, that tweet actually is better than I thought. From it, it says Titans emerge as a potential suitor. That's much better than like I thought it said. Oh, zeroing in on the Titans. That's no, that's fine. Florio's Just, response. There's everybody's no, a potential suitor right now. He's, okay, not the Patriots. Put that yeah. Put that down on the ticker, AJ. Hawks but also is, at the same time, nobody is because he loves the Packers. Okay, okay. so okay. I'll so put that on the ticker, I guess, from AJ. Go ahead and run this. Who is this? One zero two five. Multiple the game. sources: Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers is building a home in Franklin. Ooh. The second thing, a source tells me Rodgers would be quote open to joining the Titans. AJ Hawk source. That's all I was told. Open to joining the Titans, and a talk to another source, <laughs> in which at least some of Rodgers' current Green Bay Packer teammates think there is no way. Rodgers is going back to Green Bay. Ooh. Oh. According to mo That's multiple, multiple sources. Multiple Tristar sources. Moving, Stillman <laughs> Company, 1025, the game in Nashville. That is a lot of news there, AJ. Wow. As best friend of Aaron Rodgers, your take on old Cuzzy there, who's given us a lot of goods. Yeah. yeah. That guy's given the sports world a lot of goods, a lot of sources, a lot of inside the information. The first two things, hey, the first two things, he's not lying, right? Or he might not be lying. He said he's building a, or first off, he contradicted himself when it he's, says he's, he purchased a home. It's said at the bottom, and then he says he's building a home. The guy says, okay, that's two different things right there. Okay. And then he said he would be open, air quotes, open to joining the Titans. Yep, just like he'd be open to every other team in the NFL, I believe. So Except for the I Packers. guess the fact that they do tie him there, I don't know. And then his last one with the last another thing, source? Yeah, of course. You have 90 teammates. You can talk to one dude. Hey, you think Aaron will come back? No chance, man. Boom, you run with it. Okay, thank you for putting all of those to bed. And I think the difference between buying a home and building There's a home. There's definitely not zero chance that Aaron goes back to Green Bay, though. We all know that. Okay, so let's let's debunk that a little bit. Uh, one source yep. was debunked out of 1025, mm -hmm. the game in Nashville. Um, so let's go back to the building and buying a home. Building a home takes time is what you're saying. That would take a lot of time. Buying a home is like. Is, it a, like, is there a home there or is he planning on building a home? That's a different thing, isn't it? Because if he plans on building a home, it's not going to be ready if he wants to go to the Titans this year. 
You said raw land. Yeah, not if the extreme home makeover people are building. Well, the guy also Ooh. said he's building a report. The report, the guy, which we should get his name. He, we're talking about him a lot right now. One zero two five. The game. He's not lying. Like I don't, I don't have a problem with his report. Like what he's saying is fine. Okay, but building. He said building a home in Franklin. Franklin, Tennessee, is where all the ups live. That's where all the ups live down there. Nice, it's definitely a nice area. Yeah. Uh, like that's where all the uh, the big time stars live down in Franklin. That's where the Kid big- Rock's house is. I think is outside of Franklin, but it's near there. Okay, so Kid Rock lives down there. Obviously, yeah, Toby <laughs> Keith. Foxy, when Foxy and I, uh, when f- that guy's name is Jared Stillman, shout out Jared. Had Thank you, Thank Thank you, Jared. 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 Uh, Foxy and I flew into Nashville. It was, we saw the biggest houses yeah. we've ever seen flying into a place. Yeah, it compounds. Was, boom, bang, bang. There was a bunch of them too. It wasn't yeah. just like a few. Normally when you fly in, you see like a few houses yeah. and then everything kind of dissipates down. That place, there was just monster home. All had massive plots of land. Raw, raw land. land. Raw. raw land. Raw land. Okay. Is that where? Is that Franklin we probably saw? And is that just a place where a lot of wealthy like to live? Franklin's like definitely an area where I've heard. I know a lot of former athletes live or current athletes have places there. There's no, There's a couple of different areas that I keep hearing about in Nashville where they have those giant houses. So that's where a lot of people like to retire and have houses. Yeah, it must be like if Aaron has any any land or a house down there, I'm sure it's in one of those nice areas. Okay. So there's a lot to be had here, and a lot. I have some other former teammates that have places there too. Oh, Oh. that could be a tie. Don't you think that could be part of it? Oh, so maybe Aaron just had some former friends or teammates that had houses there. He has a shit ton of money. He's visited them before. It was like, you know what? I'll fucking buy a place down here. Yeah. Why? Just just saying. I looked up raw land in Franklin. It is very nice. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Right. Okay. He's got good raw land. Fifty-six acres right here. It is nice. Aaron and Cutler are going to be best friends. Do you think Aaron had? Yeah. Shout out. To uh, cut has that show down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he does that, that show anymore. He doesn't do a show anymore. Very uh-huh. cavalry. No, it's done. No, that nah, other his show. Podcast. I don't do bullshit shows. I'm talking about well, <laughs> yeah. all the shows are bullshit shows, including this one. He had a podcast down there, didn't he? Done <laughs> yeah, he did. making the cut or something. That's not right. whatever the case. <laughs> do you think he has any idea what he's doing football wise at this moment? And does the house property there any difference to that? Do any other places he has houses in L.A. Yep, Malibu. Oh, no. Justin Herbert, is he on the move? No. Is that is that what you're thinking, though? It's like, hey, this guy's got places in some places. We can't look into every single one of them like this. No, he, he has a ton of money. He may have not even visited the place. But he may have got a text from somebody he trusts. Hey, man, sweet place up here. You want a lot by me? Cool. Here, man, where's my wiring instructions? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Carpenter. Hey, not only Bobby, Zito did the same thing. Yeah. Zito didn't even see the house he bought. He just had just tell me where to send the check. He bought it. <laughs> he moved in. Turned Couple, out there's yeah. a lot more checks to come. Oh, yeah. Because everything in the photos oh, wasn't man, exactly forget. how it appeared to be in oh, real yeah. life. But that's big time stuff. All right, so we can put that to bed. Aaron Rodgers not necessarily going to the Titans. He just likes it. He could. Don't but, be an asshole. Come on. I'm not saying Probably. he's not. I'm not. I'm just saying, like everything is not a giant story, but yeah, it's not impossible for him to go to Tennessee. All right, joining us now, uh, host of the Coaches Up segment every single week. I would assume he has some thoughts on everything happening in our conversation right now. I have no idea where he is. This dude has plots of raw land all over the place. (laughs) Last week it was Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Where will he be today? Who knows, ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Pagano. Yeah. Back in uh, Idaho. Hey, can we get a quick one? Which one? AJ Hawk. <laughs> AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk. I thought we were going to do Gabagool because of Coach Lou. Yeah, I love. I love when AJ stirs it up. Oh, it's can great. You, yeah. Wait till wait till Aaron is seen. You know, going through you know a hangar. Probably not going to fly commercial. Doesn't have to fly commercial, right? No, no, no. So, but he's seen in the hangar, getting into you know a car service, you know, and heading up to Boulder, you know, to see his girlfriend. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, smoking so, a big doobie. Smoking doobie. <laughs> so wait, till, wait till that comes out and they start putting that. You know, oh shoot, we saw Aaron. You know, at the airport, DIA. I wonder what's up with that. Oh, so mm. everything he does is going to be calculated. Is there any teams you think that would say no to Aaron Rodgers right now? Do others other than obviously Joey Burrow, mm-hmm. uh, Patrick Mahomes, Bills, B- uh, Bills, yeah, Josh, Rams, Patriots, pa- probably yeah, with Mac, Rams. Chargers. Other than the obvious, is there any team you think that is not going to try to get into the Aaron Rodgers game? 
no, I think they'd be foolish, you know, not to. If he if there was some interest there, and you have a chance, I think, you know, you got to uh, turn every stone, uh, so to speak. And um, again, you mentioned the guys that have young quarterbacks, up and coming quarterbacks. There's a bunch of them in the league, but there's also a bunch of, you know, teams that, that stink because they don't have one. So if you get a chance, a shot at, you know, a guy like Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Denver, like you said, I I didn't think there was any way, but you know, ending the way that thing ended. And then you look at Denver's history with Peyton, bringing Peyton in there, uh, winning the Super Bowl with him. This just makes you know too much sense with Hackett going there and and uh, you know hiring all the Green Bay you know guys to come on that staff on the offensive side. So, but no, if I'm at if I'm at any place and and we got you know just a guy and we've got everything else and we've got something to sell, Aaron Rodgers as far as our team goes, we got a defense, you know we got. Specialists, we got kicking game. We've got this. We got we, we're missing one piece. We we might be two pieces away. You and we're going to go get this other dude. Might be you know your your buddy Devonte. Oh, maybe so, maybe wow. Devon. Maybe we bring in Devonte, a guy you have a pretty good rapport with. We already got your offense coordinator here. We're going to have offense line coach. I think maybe another another one. You would just be like Green Bay West over here in the beautiful city of. Denver, in which the rules are awesome, the weather is fantastic, and you're going to enjoy the hell out of it. There's a lot of places that can make pitches to him. I'm excited to see it unfold. I always thought that every coach would want an elite quarterback. It just seems like that's how the NFL goes. I'm happy to hear that from you. Let's talk about some of the things circulating in the coaching business. Obviously, the hiring processes are going to be under full examination. It took you like 30 years to get your first head coaching opportunity with the NFL. The thing that I think is going to be also a big deal, even if you are or somebody that thinks, you know, that you don't know enough about the hiring process or you don't know that whole other thing. As soon as you hear that owners are paying coaches to lose, and then you got Hugh Jackson coming out and saying that there was a four-year plan, the first two years we were going to stink, and then we are going to go all in. I wasn't going to be able to really win the first couple of years. That was a plan. Then I get fired before we can even get going. So he's implying that Jimmy Haslam also wanted him to lose and paid him to lose in there alongside the Stephen Ross 100,000 thing. Have you ever heard anything? like that or have you ever been in any situations where it felt as if maybe the ownership or front office was working against you a little bit even though you're trying to do your absolute fucking best to win a ball game never yeah. never I, I think you could ask you know a hundred coaches and a hundred out of a hundred would say you know never uh to the degree uh would be flow um you know as, as stated you know in his uh, class action suit you know, that he's filed, you know, that, you know, the owner came out and offered him, you know, $100,000 per game that he lo that he would lose and, and not work as hard and get on a jet and fly somewhere and go take a vacation. I mean, there's a lot of times that, you know, I would have signed up for that, you know, in the middle of <laughs> adversity, but no, I, I've never, I've never heard of that. And, you know, again, you, you mentioned, you know, 28 years I was coaching as an assistant and then got got a lucky break and, and got the indie job, but in my entire career as an assistant coach in the National Football League and a, and a head coach for six years there in Indy and a couple in Chicago to finish it out, I, I've never heard of uh, anything like that. And, you know, you know, Hugh comes in with just kind of a different angle. Um, I think you guys understand that angle of saying, okay, you know, this was the plan. You know, this is, you know, our four-year plan. Um, you know, this is what we're going to do. You know, so on the on the onset, on the front side of that thing, you know, at the very beginning, sitting down with Jimmy Haslam, you could say, okay, um, you know, because there's no there's no guarantees. Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. There's no there's no guarantees. You know, with and give you a four year contract, a five year contract, and and we've seen a bunch of one and dones. You know, by a lot of uh, organizations, but um, yeah, that's just another way to say, hey, look, you know. We're going to do this this way, and we're going to get a bunch of young players, and we're going to save money. We're going to get cap, you know, draft capital, and and have money, and and uh, you know, try to get as many draft picks, you know, lined up as we can, and um, you know. But I, I never, you know, it's kind of like everybody else. You just kind of like, you know, it's a it's a head scratcher. Chuck, I don't know how much you paid attention to the Jim Harbaugh situation going to Minnesota. It sounded like Harbaugh felt like he had the gig going in or he was like first in line and then he comes away and calls Mich Michigan says hey great news I'm coming back 
I don't know what, what exactly happened. I know I did read something. I don't know if it's a rumor or not that he gave his whole staff Wednesday off or the rest of the week off when he was going to interview. No idea. It could be a rumor online. doesn't really matter. But do you think Minnesota, like, is there a chance that they had him all, he was in their sights, he was going to be the guy, and then all of a sudden after the interview they said no? Yeah, I mean, that's what it looks like, AJ. Um, you know, because I was sitting there thinking to myself, there's no way that you get on a plane – and you go interview on National Signing Day. Now, granted, most of the kids have already signed because they've got, you know, two signing days. They got the early signing period, and then yesterday was National Signing Day. And most of the, you know, especially the Power Five schools, they've got their classes, you know, basically all locked up, all signed up. Um, but to get on a plane on 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 that day and go interview uh, with the Minnesota Vikings, I was sitting there, you know, talking. Uh, to my peeps and my family and Tina saying there's there's no way he doesn't have this job. You wouldn't you wouldn't risk that. And I don't know how you go back. You know, uh, you got a locker room full of players, a coaching staff, the administration, everybody at that school. You just you know you made the, the, you know, the college football playoff. You you got all that stuff. And I, you know, I don't know how you. There's no to me. It was like there's no turning back. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's not a done deal. And he calls, you know, Michigan and says, hey, I'm coming back, blah, blah, blah. You know, what the motivation there was, you know, we all know that they cut his salary, you know, a year ago. Did he have an ax to grind? Did he have a point to prove? Who, who knows, you know? I know Jim's a hell of a football coach, you know, and he's won uh, wherever he's been. You know, University of San Diego, San Francisco, 44 and 19. You know, uh, the job that he's done, you know, at Michigan over the past seven years, I mean, his record and resume speaks for itself, but I would have just, I, like, when I read that last night, I'm like, wow. Do you think? Hey, so, I, you know, so who knows? He was in that building for a long time. You know, so he's got the relationship with the GM as well from San Francisco. That's the new GM uh, in Minnesota, correct? Yeah. So there's, there's a, that whole thing that everybody's doing is their parent. You know, Josh with Ziggler over in, at the Raiders, right? They're, you know, the guy in Buffalo with Dayball, you know, because the most important thing is that head coach GM relationship and those guys being able to get on, you know, get along together. Uh, you, you saw, you know, Ryan Poles talking about Matt Everflus and when they got together, he says, you know, I, 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 you know, this wasn't my brother, but after I spent a day with this guy, I feel like I have a brother, you know, so to speak. And so there yeah, was, we'll obviously a, a, <laughs> you know, great connection there. And so um, something must have, you know, something must have happened in that building, you know, over the course of over the course of that interview where, you know, who, who, who knows? You Chuck, know, is there a chance, Chuck, is there a chance? Because we heard that Harbaugh was going to the Raiders and then Ian Rappaport came and sat exactly where you are right now and said, uh, maybe from Harbaugh, not from the Raiders side. And then we hear Harbaugh to the Vikings, and then it's like a little bit of smoke, and then he goes in there and does the interview. Is there a chance that the people around Harbaugh, whether it's the PR, the agent, what, uh, whoever else it could be, that are spreading this information to the insiders and to the internet, to the media, they even told Harbaugh, like, no, yeah, we think you're going to be good for the Vikings job. Like, is there a chance Harbaugh was getting wrong information going there from his own people, and should he address that? Or do you think they were just stirring up shit to maybe have an ax to grind with the University of Michigan like you brought up there, which I didn't even think about until just now whenever you said that. Yeah, um, you know, it's a, a, another great question, and, and until we know the, the real story. Would that happen, though? Uh, like, whenever you can... I that stuff. Yeah, when, yeah. I, I've seen that hurt. I've seen that hurt people. I've seen, you know, guys, and you hear stories about, you know, people's PR guy, and, and, and certain guys have friends at, at this newspaper or that newspaper. Hey, get my name in the newspaper. Get my name out there. Start putting headlines out that I'm a finalist for this job or I'm one of the top candidates, this, that, and the other. But I've seen that, you know, work both ways. And, and I know as an organization, if, you know, you're seeing a bunch of that stuff and a lot of that stuff's coming out, you know, you may go, hey, look, you know, we're going to make the final decision on this, and it isn't going to be, you know, your agent. It isn't going to be, you know, a, a PR firm that you, you've hired. But, again, think about, you know, you know the search committees you mentioned, you know, uh, the hiring processes are going to come under, um, you know, huge scrutiny, you know, here moving forward. But I think everybody has, has brought more people to the table, 
you know, when they bring these coaches in to interview. So all it takes, Pat and AJ and boys, all it takes is one person sitting in that room where they go around and say, you know, hey, thumbs up, you know, on, on Jim Harbaugh or whoever. And all it takes is one, one person that they've added to this, this committee and say, hey, look, I didn't, I didn't get a great feel. You know, or, you know, because these guys vet these guys and they call and call and call. And they're going to go back through your entire coaching history and call everybody and every school, every university, every head coach you work for, assistants, and just to try to see if one person will say, hey, look, hey, don't go down that road. This dude is, you know, and all it takes is, is one guy to make those guys flinch. Hmm. Chuck, so they hired Kevin O'Connell, and it seemed to kind of come out of nowhere. Do you know much about him, and how does that happen to where his name wasn't really being floated everywhere? Like, hey, this guy's a top candidate to be a head coach. I didn't know he existed, Chuck. I didn't know this guy even existed. I had no idea. Yeah, that makes three of us. <laughs> you know, probably the whole, the whole room over there. I mean, again, McVeigh, you know, he's... 35, 36 years old, and his tree is like, I think Lombardi or somebody was, or uh, Al Michaels was talking about, you know, his tree, and you think about all the guys, and everybody's going to go to a place where, you know, you know, Sean's had so much success in such a short period of time, and you see all these guys, so everybody wants to know, it's like Patriots, you know, everybody was going and grabbing and trying to get information. How, how, what's the Patriot way? What are the secrets, you know? So they bring these guys and they hire them, they interview them. Some work out, some don't. Um, so I don't know a lot about O'Connell. Maybe just the opposite of maybe uh, a Harbaugh situation where, hey, it's out there, he's getting it, he's getting it, he's getting it, and then all of a sudden you don't hear about this other dude where, you know, a lot of those times it's like, you have an opportunity, you're talking to a place, and you're like that close, and that's like, okay, shut the phones off, shut the media off, don't talk to anybody, you tell your, your, your group of people, you tell your camp, you know, your PR guys, your agent, just radio silence. I think we're in a good, good spot here, let's don't screw this thing up. So, like always, less is more in a lot of these situations, and so a guy like O'Connell, obviously they can't hire him. Till after the uh, till after the Super Bowl's over, if that's going to be the guy. You remember this whole thing went down with Shanahan a couple years back before he went to San Fran, right? He was at Atlanta, was the offensive coordinator, I believe, at, oh, at the yeah. Falcons, yep. and it was like, okay, it's already a done deal, and you're not supposed to have done deals. You know, there's supposed to be you know rules in place where there's windows of opportunity that you can interview and you can talk to these coaches, you know. And then that window closes if they're still playing the playoffs, and then it's supposed to open back up, you know, once the playoffs are over. So I think a lot of these deals are getting brokered, obviously, behind the scenes. And, um, again, I'm sure this guy is, you know, how about McNow in Houston? Who? McCown, excuse me. Oh, jeez. I thought you said McNow. <laughs> I was like, uh, McNow. I'm excited to I hear did. McNow. Yeah. I, I didn't I'm know. Like, I'm like a little bit of Lombardi, a, a old time. Gabagool, Gabagool starts to get infect your head and your brain. Yeah, yeah, you, I, believe me, I know. Brian, <laughs> Brian Leftwich instead of Byron, those things happen every now. But, but Josh, right? McCown coming out. I mean, never coached a day in his life, I don't think, right? And he's. Totally a finalist for that job. Well, John McClain allegedly doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground is what the internet told me. I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just telling you, some people tweeted me that after we broke the news that Josh McCown is going to be the next big NFL news that John McClain wrote in the Houston Chronicle. And John McClain's been covering the Texans, I think, for like 30 years. I think he was even covering the Oilers at one point yep. <laughs> whenever they were around. So we just assume on this show, if John McClain's saying it, there's a reason he's saying it. And then a lot of people in Houston are like, nah, John don't know shit. John don't know nothing. Nothing, but if he gets hired, it's, I mean, hey, he might be a great head coach. Honestly, Josh McCown might be a great head coach. Mm -hmm. But with everything going on with Flores and obviously Hugh Jackson coming involved, and I think there was some other folks, and there's a class action lawsuit happening where, like you said, there is not supposed to be any done deals where the day ball deal was already finished before Flores even went in for an interview and how that it looks incredibly awkward and uncomfortable for Brian Flores and he said it was humiliating obviously the entire thing it's just it's a wild time right now and I think that's going to happen
happen whenever there's like eight coaches, head coaching opportunities out there. This is a lot of openings, right? And this is taking a lot longer than normally, right, Chuck? Yeah, no question. So this leads us all to believe that, you know, there's candidates, obviously, that are that are still in play on the, on these two staffs that are left. You know, maybe, you know, Lou's name, I know you had Lou on earlier. Um, you know, his name was, I guess he interviewed at, at one point with one team. I can't remember which team it was. Uh, but obviously, you know, Raheem Morris, defense coordinator there at the Rams and, and, and you know, O'Connell, those are two guys that are, are still playing. So that that'll drag, you know, the process out. Uh, but believe me, if those guys know and they've they've had their discussions, you know, because you're saying, hey, we got to build a staff, you know, we got to put a staff together. And there's only so many coaches, you know, available and and guys covet certain guys and those guys especially the really good football coaches that have been around a long time and have a lot of experience, the guys that are hiring, you know, or been hired to this point, you know, they're, they're on the phones and they're getting those guys in for interviews oh, no. and they're trying to, you know, seal these contracts up. So the pool, the pool is going to shrink uh, really, really fast. So these teams that, that haven't named uh, their guy, they either have them, you know, in place and they're just sitting there because they're still working um, or they're trying, you know, Maybe something happens and, and something comes up out of nowhere and all of a sudden, oh, shoot, we got to start all over. Coach, Kevin O'Connell's been distracted trying to put his staff oh, together. Oh, 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 no. You think oh. Lou's been fucking around trying to build a goddamn staff? No, no chance. No way. Coach Lou, hey, you know Coach Lou? I assume you do. Defense, Italian, how you doing? Keep it moving. We have Sunday gravy together. Never worked with uh, Lou. Obviously, have admired the job that he's done. Uh, you know, at, at this at this spot in Cincinnati, but watched him from afar from a lot of places. I, you know, uh, good friends of mine have worked with Lou, and, uh, and yeah. they just ran. Cool. They just ran. Friend straight. of ours. Uh -huh. Yeah, friend of ours. Yeah. Italian coaches and you know every other coach that I know. They all rant and rave about, <laughs> about Lou, and and uh, I think he's pretty good at, at making the sauce too, the gravy. So. Oh. I didn't know that. I should have asked about the gravy. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Chuck, uh, granted Josh McCown might change this, but why do you think uh, former players who want to become coaches have to start all the way at, like, the bottom of the ranks and don't get kind of a more, like, uh, main job, like even as a defensive back coach? Great question. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a great question. I know you guys were talking uh, to D. Butt, you know, about that um, the other day when he was on the show. Um, you know, certainly just because – Again, you know, my experience and, and talking to these guys and being around these guys, you know, there are some guys like I think we all think that, like, we could hire D-Butt tomorrow. Um, D-Butts has never uh, coached, uh, you know, a day in his life in front of a room. I don't I don't believe um, he did a lot of the coaching for us at, at Indy, obviously. But but as a, as a hire, I think we could all hire D-Butt and say, hey, look, he's going to do a fantastic job. But I think that. When you have an opportunity to go to a place, and the way I started was a graduate assistant, 1984, Southern Cal, and spent two years there, a year under Jimmy Johnson at Miami in 86, and it's kind of, I, I, I learned a lot. Now, you pay a lot of those dues, you know, you're doing a lot of the grunt work, you know, it isn't a lot of football, uh, but it's the, it's the film breakdown, um, you know, it's going to get lunches, uh, Christmas trees at, at Christmas time, pumpkins at Halloween. So there's there's a lot of horror stories. There's a lot of uh, you know BS that goes on. But you learn at the grassroots level of you know how to break down film, how to watch film. You know not only you know learn one side of the ball, the other or special teams. Um, you know all all sorts of how to draw cards, how to how to put together. Um, you know, a 20, 25 minute individual, you know, you guys have gone out to practice sometimes, AJ, you've gone out to an individual period where, you know, you might've been like, I don't know how much thought coach put into this individual period today. <laughs> you know, we're kind of like flying by the seat of our pants and it might've been an OTAs. It's probably not during the playoffs or anything like that, but there's always been a time where, so there's a, there's a, a learning curve there as far as, you know, putting a, a lesson plan together, if you will. Like, you can't just go be an elementary teacher and, and teach fourth grade and not ever, you know, somebody's never taught you how to put, you know, a lesson plan together, um, you know, as far as getting up in front of a room, having, having a plan for the day, here's the install, 
here's my PowerPoint. This, this is how I'm going to teach these guys because they're all different. You know, they, they all learn uh, in a different way. Some learn, you know, off the, uh, off the board, you know, putting the pictures up. You know, um, most guys need to see that in the classroom, then go walk through it and then go practice it. But until you've like done that over and over and over again or had an opportunity to sit, like, you know, I sat for a long time and watched a lot of great coaches, you know, and, and I plucked certain things that I wanted to, you know, take with me, uh, you know, when I first got a full time job. But those aren't those aren't easy deals. And it isn't like you can just get in there and, you know, hey, you know, ball come, you come, ball go, you go. You know, I think it's a, it's a little bit more than that. You Chuck, know, and, Chuck, quick hey, question, quick question. You you talked about you know getting coffee, driving up cars, uh, driving or drawing up cards, driving to get Christmas trees and everything like that. Don't you, I mean, there is no way that guys played any significant time in the NFL ever, right? I mean, I guess people have done it. That is an incredible. Like you're 21, 22 when you do. How old are you whenever you did that at USC and stuff like that? I was 24 when I got my first job there. Okay, so you're 24, 20, like in your early 20s. Guys that are like 31, 32, 33 years old, I think that is going to be very difficult to get them after they've gotten a master's in elementary school or they've gotten a master's in football from playing on it to sign up for that type. Is there? Do you think there's any way to change that or you think that is all like a necessity type thing? Because I think former players getting into coaching is good. I think that's good for the league. I think it's good for everything. And also they're the best football minds that we have. Like, how do you think, do you think you can change that or no? You think there's no way, you, all those steps are necessary, you think? I think it's a, a lot of it has to uh, be up to the player, you know, because you bring up some great points. Guys that have played, you know, 10, 12, 14 years, and they come into the building at whatever time, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and they leave at 5. Those guys understand the hours. They, they see our cars there till you know, some of them that never leave, you know, the parking lot until Thursday or, or date night on Friday. So those guys see that and they're like, you know, and they've made a, a ton of money. And now it's like, OK, here's what you're telling me. I'm going to work 18 hours a day and you guys are going to pay me 50,000 bucks. All right. And I'm and my job description is what? OK, no, thank you. <laughs> I, got, I love football, you know, but. I don't love it this much. And maybe I can go find, you know, my passion and, and get my fulfillment, you know, at a high school level or, you know, do like, you know, Rivers is doing, you know, Phillips doing there, uh, you know, at the high school level um, and, and things like that. So we've seen that. So I think um, there are a bunch of like Larry Foote, there's guys, you know, B.A.'s got guys on the staff, former, you know, players are they're, they're all over. You know, uh, you know, Wes Welker is is carved out a, a great career for himself. But there's there's guys that I mean, we all and we all know we all could have said you know as coaches you know that guy is going to make a great coach. That guy is going to make a great coach. D. Butt be an excellent coach. Pops, you know, Mikey Adams, you know, just spent his first year in Chicago, you know, cutting his teeth there as a as a quality right. control coach on on defense, you know, in the secondary. You know, so I think it's a, you know, a, those guys are smart guys and they do know the game, but then it's, it comes down to, you know, both sides. Okay, am I willing to do that? And I don't think anymore, Pat, to be honest with you, that the stuff that maybe um, I experienced or anybody experienced, as a, especially in the National Football League, um, as far as doing like all the grunt work and things, these guys are getting, uh, re are having responsibility and, and the coaching staffs uh, that I've been around and the young coaches that we have, you, you know, in Indy, the young coaches that we had, the, the quality control coaches we had on both sides, we always tried to give those guys opportunities to get up in front of the room, oh, yeah. you know, and present, you know, not only in a position group, but in team meetings and things like that to, so they could get that experience. And it, it wasn't, hey, go, you know, go pick up my dry cleaning, go get lunch for the guys. You know, I need a car wash. This, that, you know, that bullshit doesn't happen. You know, in, in the on the coaching side, league. yeah, on the coaching but side. But the but the hardest thing is again the time commitment. Yeah, I agree, and I think it's going to be tough for former players to get in there. But our former players are our best minds. It's like the coaching world is an interesting one. It is. You got to pay your dues. You got to do your thing. But there's a lot, and then there's some people that bypass it and get in there. And if you win, that's all that matters. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, if you win, that's all that matters. And we get a chance to win every single week. We have you on, uh, Chuck. We can't thank you enough. Can't wait to see you next week in L.A., Bub.
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Appreciate you guys. No, thank you for uh, being a part of that athletic article, too, by the way. I mean, the Tom McMahon uh, <laughs> story was amazing. That is absolutely amazing. I forgot about it, obviously, but it's. Yeah. Hey. And I, I do too, so I'm reading it. You know, Zach sent it over this morning, so I'm reading it this morning, Tina and I, and, and we're just dying laughing. And, uh, you know, Tommy's story, because that's, that that's gospel. I mean, you're sitting there putting the, tea, the ball on the tee, and you see it wide open. It's the opening kickoff. And, you know, you're putting that thing down, you're looking out of the corner of your eye, and we just see the steam coming out, and, and Midge is looking at me. And I'm looking at Midge. I said, don't the fuck you. Don't let him do that. Don't give him that fucking thumbs up. You know? And Pat, you pussy. He's screaming from the sideline. Like, you went and did what you wanted to do anyway. Christ, we... Yeah, well, no. be, be who you yeah. can afford to be. But it was awesome to go through there. And I thank you for your time there. Honestly, talking to that. Hey, the, best, the best one was like, we're listening to you tell the story about the fake punt, you know, again. And that thing took, I said, how long did that take for him to tell you? Because she goes, it was like seven minutes long, that little recording. I said, I should have known better. If something takes like that long to explain and, and to, to practice, <laughs> it's out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had fun times. We had a great group of people. I was very lucky to be a part of it. But I think, you know, I think the best players in the NFL and the best coaches I think they enjoy the shit out of like the team, like like you know, like everybody being together. And I think that is what everybody misses. I was very lucky to be a part of a great group of people at the Indianapolis Colts, and obviously you're no different. So I appreciate the hell out of you, man, and thank you for joining us every week this season. We'll see you next week in LA. Appreciate you. And our USO tour, by the way, those stories about Gaston. To me, Pat, that was like the the best time of my life, you know, doing that. And for me and you personally. And where our relationship, you know, after that and having a chance just to, I mean, talk, talk and have all the filters down and, and take the gloves off. It was it was it was tremendous. And and Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> that was right. Godzilla. That, I told that story. People think it didn't happen. It really happened. I mean, there was like 100 people screaming at him and they gave out these glow sticks that were like these foam glows. This club was outright i mean lit i mean it was yeah. a very good time and they were just hitting him with these glow sticks screaming godzilla while he was <laughs> dancing in the middle of that it was awesome i mean he was obviously he's bigger than every human that i've ever been yeah. around yeah. over in japan is not uh, i think their average height is not as high right. mm -hmm. as the united states of america i would just say that he was foot and a half tower. Not just, I mean it was like this high we looked out on the dance floor and it was Anthony Costanza's top of his head and he was <laughs> he was having a full it was a great time I, I, I've said this numerous times if you need to like bring a team together or a group together or an office together go to a country in which they don't speak your language at all and it is impossible to figure out what they're saying because you literally can only rely on each other almost so everywhere we went it was just us basically talking to each other and experiencing this brand i thought it was huge it was awesome i enjoyed the hell out of that trip don't touch me mustache don't touch my mustache dude <laughs> ladies and gentlemen chuck pagana hey, 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 chuck. Chuck. Right, we'll be back in uh, four minutes to wrap up this hour, too. I believe we're going to do a test call here during the break five minutes ago with Marky Mark's people. Oh, Chuck Pagan yeah. is too good of a guy. Sorry about that conversation. We got Mark Wahlberg in about 16 minutes. We're back in four minutes with some phone calls on the 5 Energy phone line. one 4 McAfee. We'll see you then. Out of Philadelphia is one of the biggest inspirations walking around the internet. Geo, the podcast. Yeah! Okay, so you're 14 years old. Yep. You're from Philadelphia. Yep. Big time Eagles fan, podcaster. You were Carson Wentz's number one fan. Yeah. Yesterday, the AO1 invited me, and Carson invited me to the game, and I got to go on the sideline and meet Carson again. And he gave me a football. Let's go! Yeah. You're obviously full of energy, full of optimism, full of upbeat, good vibes. Yeah. What do you go through on a day-to-day? -day? I've had 20 surgeries in my life, so it hasn't been easy. Um, I have a uh, condition called SJS, um, Schwarz-Jampel syndrome. 
um, and it's basically like muscular dystrophy with dwarfism. My elbows are dislocated. My left hip is dislocated. I had to get my right hip reconstructed. The reason I'm so optimistic is because life is too short to focus on the negativity. Let's go! I'm sorry to hear that you have to be tougher than all of us on the day to day, but I am so incredibly thankful that you keep that mindset. How'd you develop a uh, love for football? We've always been a football family, but then when I started having surgeries, I started watching football, and then I just kind of fell in love. What does the rest of the season look like for the Indianapolis Colts, you think? Carson's gonna keep himself safe out there? Carson's gonna have his best NFL season here in Indy. Why is that? He loves it here and he's having fun. And when Carson Wentz is having fun, he plays his best. Okay, and how about the Philadelphia Eagles? I think they got a little developing to do with him. <laughs> Are there any players that you'd like to get on your podcast? Brian Dawkins. Oh. Is he your favorite uh, Eagle of all time? Um, him, Carson, and Zach Ertz are my top three. Oh, oh Zach Ertz. Sorry. Damn, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Why is everybody getting traded out that you like? What's the deal? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're really, really good at this. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, Philly Sports with Giovanni. One last message to somebody out there who maybe uh, doesn't view life the right way, you think? I'd just say find your happiness and find the thing that inspires you, like I found football, and just try to Look on the optimistic side. Hey, you absolutely crush it every single day. You crushed it in here. We appreciate you. We hope you loved Indianapolis, Indiana. Come back whenever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, Geo the podcast. Yeah. Hey, Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here about 10 minutes away from Mark Wahlberg's appearance on our show. AJ, you excited? Absolutely. Did you guys uh, complete the test call? I believe Zito did during the break there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We finished it. Had a baby Z. Had a baby Z. Let's go to uh, some phone calls on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. Go to 5 hourenergycom Use promo code McAfee and save 10% on your order. Yeah. Let's go to Brady in Milwaukee. Brady, what's going on, pal? Hey, what's up? What's up, dude? Man, what's going on, Brady? What do you want to talk about? Ty, huge fan, huge fan. Go Pack. Go Pack, dude. Go Pack. This might, this might be right. more for Tennessee. He's, he's experienced this a little bit. Age, how much do you think coaching truly matters? Let's say you got a, a team full of talent with an average coach, and then you got another team with average talent with a phenomenal coach. Who wins that matchup? Oh, great Ooh. question. It's probably a tie. You're a wow. Coach. Okay. Well, hold on. So, talent beats yes. hard work. No, hard work beats... Hard work. What about the Jimmy and Joes, not the X's and the O's? Hard work oh. beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Bingo. Yep, there it is. Boom. Tyler Hansborough's college basketball career. <laughs> yes. Is the <laughs> depiction of that one right there. Yeah. I, 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 that's an old throwback clip or uh, quote, I think. Mm -hmm. But it is about, I think, the... I think it is about the... The entire whole... That, that is a very difficult question to answer, I think. I, I'm not you, but I think that's a difficult question to answer there. Yeah, it's, it's super difficult because how do you how do you gauge talent levels when you go team to team, and how do you gauge who's a great coach, who isn't? And yeah, I would take 
the players over the coaches, absolutely. But coaching is very, very important and a huge part of it. I agree, because there's always those situations that appear in a game where a coach has the opportunity to either thrive or fuck his team over. Yeah. And that has happened on regular basis for some teams. Bill Belichick was known for 20 years of winning situational football. Was that just Bill Belichick, or was that potentially Tom Brady and all the boys also knowing it? I just think it's difficult to lump everybody together, you know, because I saw Hoyer take a sack in field goal range with no timeouts <laughs> right, left. Yeah. That's right. Before uh, half. Before half. I mean, yeah. Big Mike in Dallas. Yeah. They won a Super Bowl with AJ. But if you have Aaron Rodgers on the field, who's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. We are calling a timeout right here. What sure. are we even doing right now? That everybody can make everybody better. You just got to hope that you have a good culture mixing in the talent and the hard work and everybody that's just role players. Now, in the next hour, we got Mark Wahlberg seeing six minutes. Nailed it. Hit a fucking home run. Oh, yes. Those little short ones, you know, after our first break, before the hard out at the end, yeah. those are always difficult. We got a call in there, though. Yeah. 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 I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is radio. This is radio slash TV slash internet. You're doing it all. Right? Thanks, AJ. Yeah, I am. Hey, I am. hey, so for real, Al Michaels legit put his phone on a gimbal that followed his face. Yeah, I think so. He this it has is not tracking the, software, so it follows your face everywhere it goes. The gimbal oh, so he does? just posted yeah. his phone up though. Yes. It wasn't on a gimbal then. It's kind of a gimbal, yeah. Oh, okay. Sweet. Kind of a gamble. Kind of a gimbal. So he's putting it on something. It's like a little. Yeah. It, what's it? A, a, uh, it's a little metronome robot. Movie? almost. A movie. That, that, that is a gimbal, yes. That you hold on the little stick, and it keeps it like yeah. nice and yeah. uh, steady so shot. So it's a stationary gimbal, I guess yes. you could call it. Now, just for everybody's, the new iPhones are sta are stable, yeah. regardless of how much you... It's unbelievable. You shake Are they really? I haven't tested it, really? Yeah, I mean, everything else in the phone doesn't work, but the camera <laughs> right. is unbelievable. Hell yeah. It, yeah. it is very you good. You can walk with it, and it looks like a steady cam still. It's really impressive. Had a baby fox. Let's go, hey. dude. Hey. Yeah. So Al Michaels' movements on his phone look like a gimbal. That's why I said gimbal yesterday. Well, and also, uh -huh. he had that the last time he was on sitting down at his chair. Yeah. He was sitting at his desk. So he, I don't know if he just brings that thing everywhere. It is very technologically advanced. Though. It looks good. When he's in between us and that thing's yeah. zooming yeah, in on his awesome. face, it's like, holy yeah. shit, Al know. Michaels is really got cool. How do they not have them everywhere? It just blows my mind. They yeah. have things for like skateboarders. You wear it and your phone will just follow you so you don't need someone to Wait, I have one of those at the house. Oh. For what? I have one of those at the house. What'd you really? use it for? I actually remember that. I was going to do it to punt. I was going to do it to yeah. pump balls. I was just going to put the thing there so it would follow me so I could punt some balls. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I don't know if it's the same thing he got though because I had to have something on me. And no, was... I assume his is different, but same idea. Concept. Mm. Al Michaels. Uh, it's got to be face recognition. Prototype. So what are we supposed to do? <laughs> what happened? See this? Yeah, I, I, I see you. <laughs> that was awesome. I do believe our guest, who's supposed to be joining us in like five minutes, is already on. And we, awesome. Who would we be if we didn't? Yeah. I mean, have to. Yeah. We have to. Yeah. What do we? Don't have a choice. Come on. Will you let him know? Is he? Can he hear us right now? Hey, can we start this thing early, dude? Or a man of his stature. Yes, he can hear you. Hey, can we start this thing early right now, or should we wait? You can start early if you like. Yes. My God! My dude! Say your name and your outlet, and you can begin. Uh, hi, my name is Patrick McAfee, <laughs> alongside Peyton Manning here at the Pat McAfee Show, uh, and we are no. pleased to be joined by an absolute icon, a man who has accomplished everything. His show, Entourage, shaped my entire life, literally and figuratively. On to talk about his new movie, Uncharted, which is in theaters everywhere February 18th. An absolute thriller about finding treasures and reading clues alongside fucking Spider-Man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah! What an introduction. Huh? Pretty good. Pretty good. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you, man. You deserve yeah. all of that and more. I wish I could have gave you a little bit more. Uncharted's going to be good. You're in the middle of a press run right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're promoting the tour, but the Buffer Brothers have nothing on you. That was fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, anytime, that was good. Hey, you make a lot of movies. You need a white to introduce you ever. Let me know. You know, I'm ready to go. Thank you, buddy. How are you guys doing? Hey, not too shabby. How are you? Very busy with this. This movie looks unbelievable. We weren't able to yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're excited about it. It's something that's been in the making for quite some time. So between, you know, anticipating, uh, you know, Uncharted coming out to theaters February 18th and now waiting to hear what Aaron Rodgers does next and when he announces it on your show, 
We're uh, we're excited. I'm uh, I'm on pins and needles here. That's good news. Hey, obviously you have a sweet stash right now. I know you're doing something with that. Uh, you have like a little Twitter challenge, right? Can you explain that? Yeah, you know we uh, we, we made the movie uh, yeah, Uncharted. Obviously, it's beloved. Uh, over 40 million uh, video games sold, and the character Sully is quite iconic in his look with the mustache. In the beginning of the movie, I don't have the mustache, and I kind of transition into what people know from the game uh, as Sully with the stash. So Spoiler. I wore the mustache at the end of the film, and then I wore it for another film, and then I was like, you know what? I want to remind people that I was the Sully, and then also my sister and my brothers think I look so much like my dad with the mustache that so I'm just, uh, you know, honoring him. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm wearing the stash till the movie comes out. Great. Mo- hey, keep that thing around. Yeah. You know, I know you got to do a lot of different my wife, My wife hated it at first, and now she's digging it. And so we're now we're challenging <laughs> other people to annoy their uh, significant others and, uh, and wear a mustache as well. Well, if I had the ability to grow one that looked like that, I would definitely shave the rest of my face. If I was as attractive as you, I would do the same thing. Can I talk yeah. about your range, though? You're either the most wholesome dude in a movie or the fucking baddest of all dudes of all time. And in this one, it feels like, and we we didn't get to see the screener last night because the ice storm that came through, but we saw the trailer, we read about it. I think you got both going on in this particular movie. I think you're the mentor, the wholesome guy. And then I think I seen you fucking some people up in there too, Mark. Let's go. Yeah, he's also he's also the least trustworthy guy in the world. But you know, <laughs> as you kinda you chip away at him, uh, you know, this is this this kind of uh, treasure hunting uh, world is is very cutthroat. And so, you know, he, uh, but he does, if you chipped away at him, uh, he realized that he has a heart of gold. So it's amazing that Tom and I kind of butt heads the whole time. And then, you know, it's, it's great for uh, people to see us come together as a team. Okay, no spoilers, no spoilers. That was smart. Uh, Mark, quick, p- quick pivot. What's, uh, what do you think about Mac Jones and the Patriots and, and what they're going to do going forward? Well, you know, they started. They went on that run there, and I thought, oh my God, Mac Jones, he's he, dude. First year out of the gate, he this guy's going to the playoffs, and he's going to be fantastic. And you know, they they hit a bit of a, a road bump there, but I still think he's got a shot. He's he's uh, he's super talented. You know, um, didn't end up having the season that I had hoped. Uh, Buffalo, that Buffalo game was pretty was pretty uh, yeah. tough, but yeah. you know uh, he's got he's got talented potential. It's just crazy now if you look at Joe Burrow, you look at Patrick Mahomes, and you look at Josh Allen. I mean, those guys are so mobile. They got cannons. It's just it's just a different level right now. Let's talk about a thousand yard rushing quarterback that you got to see a lot, uh, Tom Brady. He obviously announces his retirement here just a few yeah. days ago. I assume you and him are very tight. You are friends. What is it like to watch your friend retire from being the greatest of all time? and he's probably going to go on to make a bazillion dollars after football, but not seeing him on the field is going to be a little bit different, I assume, for you. Yeah, I was, I was actually, I was kind of surprised. I was hoping that, uh, you know, they were, they were going to have one more, one more go at it and visit one more Super Bowl. But, you know, he's done so much, for, obviously, for New England, uh, the fan base there, what he did for Tampa in the two years that he was there, and what he did for football as a whole. Uh, I'm happy for him. He's retiring. He goes, go on and enjoy the rest of his life and look forward to seeing what else he's, he's going to do. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where I, I'm surprised it only took him 22 years to get that thousand yards, you know, <laughs> it only take him 25 to get there. But, you know, um, what, what an accomplishment, what a career. And, uh, you know, I'm uh, excited to see what he does next. Uh, so we have a picture of your daily schedule. Okay, we read wow. this. We ha- I have a lot of respect for you, Mark. I think you've accomplished so much. Uh, and obviously you seem to be everywhere at all times. Is, is any of this real? Like, <laughs> is this real? This is what you do every single goddamn day, Mark? There's it's a- not every single day. It's what I was doing at the time. But they, oh. they also they misinterpreted some stuff. I think if you look at that schedule closely, it has me being in the shower for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not the case, but I was getting up at 2.30. I mean, today I got up at 2.45. I got a lot of stuff to do before I go to work. Uh, I want to get my training in, all my prayer time, or whatever else I need to do before I start my day, getting the kids up for school, which is no easy task. But, it, you know, the last movie I did, I put on 30 pounds. So I was just kind of eating and, you know, stuff in my face. It really just depends on what I'm doing for work or what, you know, the, the next role that I'm playing calls for in preparation. How, when did you get to this point? Do you have a, like, a look back and when you became, like, this super businessman, tightened up, or has this always been the way you've operated? Have you always been this? Well, 
Yeah. I've all, I've always been a, a bit of a go-getter and pretty ambitious. I mean, even you know, people ask me a lot about my video game history because this movie's based on a game. I mean, to 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 get a quarter out of my dad was not an easy thing to go and play asteroids one time, and then if I wanted to shovel snow or sell newspapers or do anything else, odd jobs, I was always kind of getting after it. The only way I could make something happen is if I went out there and kind of did it myself. So I've just applied those that work ethic to what I do now, and it, it works. So I don't I don't want to change it. I don't want to you know defer from it amen mark this guy that you're talking to in the tank top pat thinks that he can make the uh the senior pga tour someday i know you're a very avid golfer very good golfer what do you dog. think the chances are on someone like him all of a sudden becoming an elite <laughs> golfer and, and making the tour what's his deal I, you know what i i mean i don't know i i had that kind of same ambition when i first discovered the game i was like this is what i want to do i played in every tournament i know pebble beach the pro-am just started today and i'm like Thank God I'm not there at 5 o'clock in the morning. The lights are just coming on. You're freezing cold. You're hitting balls. It's six and a half hour rounds. Um, you know, although I do want to go back there in, in hopes to find good weather. But now I just kind of play with my buddies. We play in two and a half hours. I do try to practice every day because I want to get good. But the greatest thing just happened to me. My son started playing before Christmas. So both of them now are hitting balls every day. They're going to play uh, at, at night and the, under the lights, so I, I love it. I mean, for us to be able to just pick up and go and travel wherever we want and play together, that's gonna be the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You don't have to go anywhere, right? I mean, images of your backyard surfaced on the internet, and I think everybody oh, yeah. said, oh my, how long did this take? Did you build this because your kids got into golf, or is this whole, oh? No, I built, I built it before for myself, but now in hopes that they would, so I have one range that's up high, and then I have the other range down below for them, so they're not breaking the windows in the guest house and everything, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love the game that much, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna go and uh, after I finish today, go and hit balls, I'll probably hit, you know, uh, you know, a couple hundred balls, and then chip and putt, and then, you know, play with my my sons and put have a putting contest with them after i can't wait to see you in the champion store me and you are going to fucking wreck shop in there dude it's going to be so much fun I, yeah we'll be going up against who's uh i don't know i'm already 50 and i i, I don't think i can make it i've probably uh you're 50 shot, yeah and i've shot under par maybe three times my whole life so i'm not i'm not expecting to go into the champions tour but you're 50 years old, dude. I would have yeah. never guessed that. Has anything that you didn't think was going to happen in your life not happened? It feels like you got businesses that are very successful. I mean, the Wahlburgers oh, were yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You're in the water game for a bit there. I saw you pushing that stuff. Movies, <laughs> obviously, you started in the music world. I think you have uh, RVs for sale right now. Yeah, has there, has yeah. there been anything that you Car have? Car dealerships. Car dealerships, sorry about that as yeah. well. Yeah. Reality Sports TV. Nutrition, gyms, yeah. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you like had on the list of things you would like to accomplish? Um, no, but I mean, you know, I, all the things that I do are things that I have a real passion for and that I kind of live on a daily basis. So I don't really do too many things that are, that are, yeah, I mean, I have a portfolio and I got a guy who kind of, you know, makes some investments for me on a passive Ooh. level, but I like to be involved and get, you know, get, uh, get in there and make things happen. So, um, I just, uh, you know, I do things that I love and that I'm passionate about and, you know, I love to build business. I've always had that kind of entrepreneurial spirit. So, but I'd like to, I'd like to just uh, make more movies where I live, so I could spend uh, less time away from home and my family. Yeah, I think I read what Uncharted. You filmed in Spain and some other places I couldn't pronounce. Yeah, Spain, Berlin, Madrid, and, and other parts of Spain during the pandemic, which was tough because you're in these beautiful locations, but you don't get to really go anywhere or do anything. Kind of whisk to the hotel. You get tested. You test in the morning. You test again at night, and. You know, you don't want to do anything to kind of shut down the production. That would be a big no-no. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear you give any, like, I'll kill you speeches, but I heard that from other actors, you know, during the, uh, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if, you messed up, if you messed up any of the COVID things. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about Entourage. You know, because there's always like this loose reference like, oh, that's Mark's life. And then I assume there was some creative liberties after season one, season two, season three, whatever yeah. it was. How accurate yeah. was that? And did you expect to change like, for instance, my life with that thing? I grew up in Pittsburgh, never could have imagined what it would be like with your friends making it big in the business. Did you uh -huh. know that as that was happening or did you have any expectations and how true is it to your life? 
We always felt like it would be the ultimate wish fulfillment for guys, you know, to kind of be there living vicariously through them. And what better way to enjoy success than to share it with your friends? So I always took my guys with me wherever we went. And we started making a documentary about my buddies trying to start a rap career in their late 30s. And uh, and it was a it was a disaster. So we were documenting that and we we're showing everybody and they're like, oh, my God, we should do a, a TV series, a scripted series about you and your friends. And I said, no, let's kind of make it loosely based on us. And uh, and so they took stuff from my life, from other actors uh, in their experience, you know, whether it was Leo, lots of different people. And we kind of, you know, try to make it as realistic as possible and, and bring people into that experience and 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 again sharing it with our friends and we you know we we looked at sex in the city and how much women love that show and we we're like oh we need something like that for guys and and uh and it was uh something that you know obviously changed the game i remember the first time we did the pilot i couldn't get anybody to do a cameo so i had to do it myself <laughs> and then i remember you know people then begging to be on the show and and when we finally did the movie I mean, you had literally, I don't know, 75 cameos. I mean, a list of people begging to be on the show, which was great. Yeah, I think you accomplished the male sex in the city, man. Way to go, Mark. Yeah. Hey, way to go, Mark. We appreciate it out there. Go ahead, Ty. Thank you. Mark, at this point in your career, obviously, people are kind of coming out to you uh, when they want you to be in something. And you've been, you know, one of the biggest movie stars in the world for what, 20 plus years, but are there any guys, uh, either actors or actresses or directors who you haven't worked with yet that you'd like to before it's all said and done? Oh my gosh, there are so many. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the greats and, you know, they've taken me under their wing. I really get to kind of pick their brain and, and learn from them. But, you know, the, of course, the Clint Eastwoods, the Steven Spielbergs, you know, Guillermo del Toro's, there's so many and all the up and coming filmmakers. Um, I'm always, you know, excited to either kind of find my own stories and get them made myself or I'm also willing to go and service a vision of a, a writer director and have them give me line ratings. I don't care. I just want to work with the greats and I want to continue to do more and more and better and better each time out and challenge myself and grow as an actor. I feel as excited about uh, working uh, now as I did when I started. Hey, how awesome is Antonio Banderas? I know he's in this movie, which oh, I've always amazing. been a giant fan. Amazing. Amazing. You know, he and I had known each other for a while, but we never worked together. And he's what a great villain. He, he really enjoyed himself. And, uh, <laughs> you know, people loving him in the movie. Uh, February 18th, Uncharted comes out starring this man, Tom Howland, Antonio Banderas. I know you got a lot of other stuff to do. We appreciate you. What is your what do you think would be your natural walk around weight? You think because I think we see you yoked up. Yeah. We saw you fat. Now we see you, you know, kind of standard operation. Well, what do you think is your standard weight? Like 190. I mean, I've gone from 218 to 130. I was just 136 for a movie. So I, I kind of. You know, how? I, how? What do you do? Uh, it's just drink water and uh, do cardio and uh, be miserable. But and then, of course, <laughs> eating, you know, uh, I think the eating, eating and putting on weight is harder just because, you know, you still got to even if you're full, you got to pack in the next meal and then pack in the next meal. Um, but in losing weight, you know, you just got to be more disciplined. Well, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your commitment to the characters that you play. Can't wait to watch Uncharted on February 18th. The mustache looks fantastic. Have a great one, boss. Hey, thank you, guys. Congrats on all your success. Oh, thank you. Hey, you too, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> one day we strive to be like Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah! All right, so they were trying to relay information to Zito. Zito couldn't see it on the computer, so they had actually had it pop up on the screen there towards the end of it. In the middle of a run, I can't believe we got a chance to chat with him. They that kicked us awesome. out of that meeting so fast. What's that? <laughs> they kicked us out of that meeting so fast. Oh, yeah, they're done with it. We yeah, got, there's a new one coming up, I bet. Yeah, 2.15. Yeah. He's doing, it's a junket. He's got them all day. Yeah. I feel like us... Uh, and we really separated ourselves. Today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. sure. I feel like we really separated. When he wraps up all of his interviews from the day, he's going to think back. That one that's that just nice. started awkwardly at 158. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, to, sorry to serious listeners. We, Mark Wahlberg showed up in our Zoom yeah. call. Marky Mark waits for nobody. He showed, up, er, he showed up early. And I was like, all right, we might as well just go ahead and do this entire thing. How about that? If he's just posted up there talking all day, I can see how that could get a, a bit relentless. I'm going to watch Uncharted, yeah. though. Imagine oh, yeah. being 60, walking around 60 pounds less than your normal walking around wait yeah 130 what movie was what movie did he do obviously he it hasn't come out yet i think it's on uh i saw a trailer for one on apple i believe apple plus he's got some movie he's starting is coming out i think this week as well with uh uncharted coming out too damn so we got the uncharted press but not the other one not right other i believe one. so good to know he actually did 
bulk up to 218. Because we were looking at those photos. Oh, what, Pain and Gain? You guys see Pain and Gain? Yes. Oh, yeah, with so rocked, right? yeah. No, no, there's this other one. No, where he was, the uh, Rock's in that, though. Pain and Gain, yeah, I know that one. Mm-hmm. But uh, th- th- that wasn't the one he was force-feeding himself for, was no, it? No, no. That one hasn't come out yet, either. Yeah, it's another one. Hey, Mark's got 10 of them on deck, dude. Mm-hmm. That's what you need to know. So, dude, it's always... Hey, I drive by Mark Wahlberg Chevrolet. That's not too far from me. I was like, when did this place become Mark Wahlberg? And it's... I guess he's got dealerships all over now. I love that good business, man. Uh, we we got an opportunity to watch the screener last night. Like we had a theater, we we're supposed to go watch it and everything. Why don't they send you a link? That's normally what happens, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. We don't normally do this. This isn't something we normally do. I've so, j- how many did they say could go? The whole th- whole yes. crew. Yeah. What if you said, "Hey, can I can I fill the theater?" Yeah, sure. With yeah. your buds, like with your friends, no filming. Well, I think we could actually next time we should think mm-hmm. about just filling the theater in general. Well, but yeah, everybody would have came. Every, I mean, everybody cool. was supposed to come, but it was an ice storm, so we oh, missed it. Yeah. But it was big for them for us to watch it before talking to him. So when I told him, ah, I didn't get to see it. I heard him go, huh? So I'm sure he's pissed at somebody for letting us. You know, he probably says, "Hey, how about you send the guys a link?" That's probably what he said to his people. Well, that's what we said back a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. Like, Can you? They do don't it? trust yeah. it though. They don't trust people with links. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, but you can make it active. Name on it. But you just put your big name. Like uh, Conor, Conor McGregor sent us his uh, documentary before it came out. Yeah, I said it's Cena. And it said literally our name right across it. You know, right across yeah. the Well, top. and you can only make the link active for like 24 or 10 hours or whatever, right? Yeah, but they well, got a lot going on. They got a lot. But if yeah. it's February 18th, are they worried that you're going to take yeah. like spring no. grabs and yeah. leak, leak things? That's a long time from now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, two weeks. Wow, yeah. Why is he doing the junket today? What, what is a junket? What are we even? Yeah. You, said so you this sit a down. Of times. You saw his background. Like when guys are doing movies, they sit down, and usually it's like five minute interviews where people just roll through for six straight hours doing five minute interviews. Is that real? Oh yeah. It's actually yeah, funny I've you say done. that. Uh, the link yeah. was called Junket. Yeah, he's probably doing that for the next like six hours today. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. My. That's what they do to promote it. They have to get all like they hit every local station and place from all over the country, basically. Damn. Remember when you kind of had to do one? Yeah, I'm sure you've done it. Uh, I don't think I've done anything like that. I think it was when we were D A Z N. Remember you just sit in Remember when you had to sit in here and do like fucking twenty interviews? Oh yeah, they, oh, yeah, they yeah, had me remember. call people. I yeah. was calling people though. So that mm-hmm. was it. Damn. You were Similar. Similar. Kind of twenty? By the way, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I assume there's. I don't think it does. I assume there's a method to the madness, but I don't. Podcasting know. is the way to get get messages out now more. I think so too, but the people that popped up on the screen said, "You got three minutes. Get them the fuck out of here." Well, <laughs> we, we had them longer than I thought. Hey, me too. It started. Early. That's why right. when I saw him there early, it's uh, Zito was like, He's here. Yeah. <laughs> when old buddy said, "State your name in your organization or your I outlet." That. I was pumped awesome. for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that Mark or somebody else? Someone, Someone else. else. Producer somebody on the other else. side. What if we would have said, uh, this is the Boomer Esiason show? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's well, texting, he's texting his buddies right Manning. now. Yeah, saying that, hey, I just talked to Peyton freaking Manning. <laughs> could he see us or no? Yeah, the whole time. He could see us. To my understanding, yeah. Okay, good. Hey, shout out, Mark. Thanks for coming. Thank back. you, Mark. Uh, Eric Weddle is basically said that he's not playing football for any other team ever again. No, no, no. I'm going right back to the life I had before I got signed, (laughs) and it's actually a pretty good mindset to be. It's amazing to be able to understand that and know that I don't have to save myself for next season. I don't have to save myself for the offseason. I didn't have to save myself for the Super Bowl last week knowing it wasn't guaranteed, so I was throwing it in there, giving it everything I got. And he had nine tackles and one tackle for loss, led uh, the Rams in tackles in the NFC Championship game because, listen, I don't have anything left after this other than going back and doing what I was doing before. After this Super Bowl, I move on, go back to my old life, and there will be no comebacks. There will be not playing for another team, another game. No, 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 he says. (laughs) That's awesome. He said, so this is it. All right, so what you're going to see out there, and not that the Super Bowl isn't a higher speed than the playoffs, and the playoffs are a higher speed than the regular season, and there's more sacrifice in saying, hey, what's the worst that could happen? I got no tomorrow anyway, so if I fucking throw my entire back into this and blow up, out every single T2, T1, T7 on my spine. It's not that big of a deal. Guys are really laying it on the line. Look for why don't do some crazy shit in the Super Bowl, it sounds like. That's what I'm reading there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's unbelievable what he has been able to do coming off the street and play so well. It's just, it's an awesome story. They dropped him in. Yeah. Just yeah. dropped him in there. How you doing? Yeah. We're playing in the playoffs. These are big time games. Good luck out there. We need you to make plays. He said, ah, I still got it. And by the way, no hits all year. 
Yeah. Fresh body. body feels pretty good, actually. Fresh legs, hopefully. Yeah. What if Weddle does this for the Rams for the next five years? Just when the playoffs come, the Weddle. Nah. Uh, yeah. It's Weddle time. Yeah. Come on in. Let's go ahead and get it. Why not? I could see him maybe getting tempted in the future, but he's saying no, no, no. Not another game. Not another team. No, 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 no. Yeah, but if he's saying, like, I'm just going to go back to what I was doing, is he just going back to eating weights and staying ready just in case the Rams do make another Super Bowl? Run? And, and playing pickup basketball, right? Yep. Yeah. That's what he's mm-hmm. doing for cardio. I. More power to him, man. He's basically just saying, hey, there's no way I'm doing OTAs in camp again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I just did? I fucking came in and led team in tackles in the championship game. I'm going to the Super Bowl. I didn't do this before. What are we even doing around here? It's crazy. Pretty I, simple. I feel like he looks like quicker and faster now than he did at the end of his career, probably because of the time off and because his body's healed a little bit. I wonder what the weight difference is for him now versus what he normally plays. You mm-hmm. know? Looks similar, doesn't he? He does, but there's probably, you know, there's probably some sort of. Especially since he didn't have like any, it wasn't like, oh, he came out of retirement and he had a six weeks of camp or build up. Like, oh, here we go, buddy. You're, you know, you drop your kids off at school today and then you're playing in the uh, NFC Championship game the next day. And you're going to somehow lead us in tackle. Because doesn't your body need to take a couple beats? Like you said, first couple of days of training camp was always tough on the body. You know, you have to get like recalous, get back into hitting shape or whatever. Do you think. He was just able to just bounce around there. Or you think he's sore as hell? He is sore as hell. I'm sure, huh? he's sore, but who cared? Sore is nothing. Like no, sore is fine. Sore. If you're sore, that goes away eventually. Like hurt is one thing. Sore. Come on, get over it. Well, you hurt or you injured. <laughs> yep. You hurt yeah. or you injured. Bingo. Sore is like you should take pride in being sore. Like sore feels good. Like if you get, it's like if you have meatheads get a good old bench session and their their chest is sore for the first time in a little while. Like, oh, okay, good. I'm working. Yeah, you earned that. Yeah. Even though you can't stand up from the shit you're taking, you earned that feeling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anybody anybody could just stand up after taking a poop. They didn't go in there and squat, body weight, squat. They didn't do the triceps, so you can't even help yourself up with your arms. They didn't didn't do any of the things that have caused you to slide off of the toilet onto the ground (laughs) to try to stand up because your legs are so dead. You earned that type of soreness. Is that what you're saying, AJ? Absolutely, and I'm, I'm sure your uh, adrenaline really helps out, too, when you realize, oh, my body hurts so bad. Oh, here we go. I'm, I was sitting on the couch, and now I'm in the Super Bowl. So yeah. that obviously is a big factor in that. Think about how good he was in his pickup games. Oh, Absurd. Yeah. He was first pick every time. Oh, we got Eric. I, I assume the first time you showed up, though, uh, awkward-looking white. Let's yeah, pick him last. Stinks. With the beard. And then there was, uh, I don't know how many... Probably four or five points in. They're like, oh, we'll never make that. Oh, oh shit. Good. We'll never make that. We got Billy Hoyle here. <laughs> yeah. Let's get Billy Ho on the line. Um, let's bounce around a little bit. Uh, Andrew Whitworth is older than both head coaches in the Super Bowl, this guy. Played for the <laughs> Bengals for so long. Now he's playing against the Bengals in the Super Bowl. He's 44 years old. Sean McVay is 36. Obviously, Zach Taylor is 38. These two come from the same coaching tree. They are young offensive gurus who have been hired. And Andrew Whitworth, left tackle, who was hurt, then he was back, then he was hurt, then he was back. A man who's respected by everybody is older than both head coaches. How about it? Atta baby, Andrew. Hey, 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 Andrew. hey wait to take care of your body. To be and your mentals and yeah. your chickens mm-hmm. to be able to play this long. Very big congratulations, to I Andrew. I believe Wilson. I also saw that he has more snaps on the Bengals than anyone on the Bengals does right now. Which would make sense because that Bengals team's so young, they don't know what they don't know, AJ. They don't know what they don't know over there. It's good. It's good to be kind of naive to, to the situation, I think. And then it just becomes the expected situation. Like, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. don't you think you're either like some people can be naive which is great. And then some people can be, they may be almost legends, but they also have some scars on them where they mentally at times, they think back on the couple of times it didn't work out when young guys that are naive. What do you mean? Not, we're just here. We're not, we're just playing. And for instance, here's an example. Whenever I watch a playoff game, I'll see a ball dropped. I'm like, can't, can't drop ball in the playoffs. Can't do that. That's going to lead to a loss. And somebody on the team might even think that like, Hey, you can't do that in the playoffs. I'm not saying this happened for the Bengals, but the Bengals see that like, yeah, no big deal. This ain't a thing. Cause we'll they catch the next one. Yeah. We'll get the next one. Cause they haven't got that situation where it has just been an absolute sword through the heart because of one mistake. And it becomes the new regular. And I'm like jealous. I am incredibly jealous that that young crew over there, if this is the expectation they're going to have going into workouts and the off season. This is how they're going to carry themselves. I love it. I absolutely, 
absolutely love everything about it. Well, and I'm not saying like this is exactly how it is for the Chiefs, but it felt like that. Like the Chiefs have had those heartbreaking losses in the AFC Championship, and then once things started to go bad, and you know they were winning and they had a lead, and it started snowballing on them. I feel like because of that, because they already are you know calloused from massive losses and know that they can't blow it any time. The Bengals are just like, yeah, yeah we'll just win. I we'll guess. Just win. I guess. Come yeah, back. I guess we'll just go to the Super Bowl. I don't know. What? What? I guess we'll hop on a bus in our full pads like we're fucking in a single A <laughs> high school yeah. and drive down to the University of Cincinnati and hopefully the soccer team or uh, field hockey team right. or any of the other Cincinnati Bearcat squads aren't on the fucking field so that the Cincinnati Bengals, the AFC champions, the team that's playing in the Super Bowl in less than 10 days or whatever has to go to some university that is not a Power 5 school. No offense to Cincinnati. This is not my deeming of who's Power 5 who's not Power 5. You're Power 1 in my eyes. This is an embarrassment, okay? This is a fucking embarrassment that they had to do this today. You know it. I know it. In all of Cincinnati, who's attacked me for always referencing this, referencing this, they're on a goddamn bus like the 12 year olds driving down to a college <laughs> to practice today for the Super Bowl. So, I mean, it's 2022. There's $110 billion in deals in media rights, let alone there's $6,000 tickets to the Super Bowl right now. I assume the Bengals are going to see some of that in the end of the day. And they're driving to the University of Cincinnati's indoor facility. That, that, uh, enough of it. Enough. Yeah. Build the goddamn I, bubble. I hear you. I hear you. But to, I mean, to the Bengals' credit, I did hear that they get priority during the playoffs, though, where they get what? to go out first. And they don't have to wait. <laughs> no way. Hey, it's good negotiation. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hey, that Brown family will say, "Listen, uh, we'll pay you for this thing, but we." Like, can who's probably... the intermural? I need to talk to the intermural director. Like, when we we need to be priority number one when the playoffs start. Imagine like Mike coming in with a headband on. Yeah. We got a uh, we got an ultimate frisbee tournament. Today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we sign up. Did you sign up, Joe Burrow? Did you sign up for the ultimate? Oh, you frisbee? didn't. We got the we got the field for the next hour and a half. All right, and this game isn't even started yet. So fucking scram, Zach Taylor. Yeah. Then he comes running <laughs> off. <laughs> You know, <laughs> boys, are, the Bengals are all sitting on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a pickup basketball they game. They're cheer. They're cheer. They, they start cheering for the kids. Oh, uh, this guy's pretty fucking good. That mm -hmm. Mike guy's a little bit of an asshole, but the guy he's throwing that frisbee to, he's a stud. Jamar, maybe you can learn a little bit from that. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're waiting for the field to go. We got next. Who are you? The fucking AFC champions. Yeah. We're trying to practice for the Super Bowl. That's what's happening right now. I mean, it, it is kind of crazy when you think about it. But that is happening. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, what are we even... <laughs> Maybe that's those, there's those moments, though. You and Chuck talked about the USO tour. You guys hanging out. We're riding on the bus. Great fellowships, sharing stories. Here we go. Yeah. Let's go win the Super Bowl. Well, I hope the stories are, I can't fucking believe we're this good of a team with this shitty of a fucking organization. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's real, though. You come together. Guys come together in misery. I'm not saying they're in misery, but when you're in rough situations or tough situations, it does bring you closer. Which is why training camp is always something that a lot of people love getting away. It's miserable. We're all in this thing together. We build some camaraderie. And maybe there is like a, a togetherness of playing for an amateur organization in the most successful league in the world. I mean, maybe there is, but... I mean, these boys should be able to get out there and practice whenever, however, mm -hmm. wherever the fuck they want on their own property. Yeah, so, maybe in 10 years, though. Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are like, you guys don't even understand. We used to have to drive down the road. To, and then we win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Ever since we got this stupid indoor facility, yep. we haven't been back yet. You know, like that they're setting up for that, Joe too. Joe Burrow's never going to say no. that. No. Every player in there is thinking as they're on the bus down to the University of fucking Cincinnati. No offense to the Bearcats. Love the Bearcats, okay? Let's go, Bearcats. All right, love Luke Vick. They're on the bus driving down there thinking to themselves, this is the highest league. This is the yeah, highest yeah. level. This is, we're playing in the Super Bowl. And here we are on school, but I heard there was six school buses. Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, they better pray to God that one of those things doesn't get stuck in a snowbank either. And Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and those guys got to yeah. get out of the bus yeah. and push, push it, it out. And, True. You know, <laughs> Paul but, Hammy. Hey, but this is how, you know, how this I rode on those buses. Those buses were nice. We took them to mm -hmm. our, uh, when we had a team volleyball match too at the, the place with all the, the sand courts during OTAs. Those buses aren't nice. Hope My team won, but yeah. Congrats. Nice. Holy yeah. shit. You get a ring? Get one of these? No, I, I didn't. I got a parking spot that I ended up selling to another player. You got a, what? I got a, a, one of the closest parking spots for my team winning, and then I, I flipped, my, flipped the spot because <laughs> I didn't care to park that close. I bet you fucking Mike Brown loved that move. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. We'll I like us, this guy. I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to steal a dollar and cut a corner anywhere he possibly can. He'll Jeez. park on the other side of the parking lot. No, I could, I could park like – 
four spots next to it. Like it, you know, if you show up decent time, there's you know, there's plenty of spots. Were you still driving that shitty pickup truck? Yeah, <laughs> I don't on. know what I was driving. At the time. Ohio Definitely. State legend one. Are you talking about that one? Or are you talking oh, about the yeah. one he drove out here with plastic? The one on the he seats? drove out here. The yeah, plastic yeah. on the seats. Plastic on the oh, seats. Yeah. One seater. Plastic on the seats. What do you mean? Oh, the uh, the O2 Corolla. Like yeah. It was a shit box. Anyways, let's get oh, to a break. It's amazing. It's a work truck. It's great. Did it, it didn't have farm use only on the side, so it ain't that big of a fucking yeah. work truck. Did you it? drive it to your attic? Fucking drop sheets in the back. Guys. Before I came to Indy one time, though, my, my back left tire went completely flat, like the couple hours before I was supposed to drive to Indy. So I got a couple cans of fix a flat and jammed it in there and continued what? to put air in there for the last two years, but filling it up with air. And wish for the best. <laughs> it's worked out great. It's great technology that fix a flat. How does it work? We will never know. It's like the movie uh, Greed or whatever. You know, the uh, vaporizer? Oh, yeah, uh -huh. that's right. Where does it go? Nobody knows. How's fix a flat work? Nobody knows. How's that sealant work that they have? That can just be put on the glass and it seals up water yeah. somehow. Yeah. Flex seal. Nobody yeah, knows. Flex seal. Oh, oh I had a bunch of that. It's great. Ugh. It is, but what is it? How does it work? I don't know. Killing the environment. Yeah, probably. it was yeah. just like that uh, non-stick frying pan. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. All these things. You know, some chemist makes them. This will burn down the world. Sham wow. <laughs> How sham? How's that thing? How does that thing get so dry? Oh, so, it like doesn't make sense. makes no sense. Like those divers, all those divers use the, their towels are like this yep. big, and they're those blue things, and, they're, and it's completely yeah. dry. Yeah. Like what is that? How? How has water not done that with anything else <laughs> yeah. in the past? But this thing comes. How does that work? That's alien tech. All oh, that's alien tech. That's what we're thinking as well. Yeah. How do planes fly? I mean, you, the right brother. Could you build a microwave? How do microwaves work? Yeah, and they're getting better and better. It's a nuclear too. bomb every ten seconds. That's what they say. Somebody wow. did tweet me about a nuclear bomb happening in this office the other day. We're happy to see you back, Zito. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Z. Thank you, Z. I lost a lot of blood that day. Yeah, Zito. It wasn't just his butt; it was his nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out of both ends, he was losing blood. I don't know if it I was that bleeding out of my butt. butt. No, I don't. Think. Okay, thank you. No. He wasn't able to. to see it though. I mean, with yeah. the mess. <laughs> Oh no. All right, we're, we're back in four minutes. <laughs> Z, we're happy you're okay. Thank, Thank you guys. Happy Thank boy, Z. Guys. Love you, Z. Love, Love you, Z. Z. Love you guys. All right. We'll be back in four minutes with some phone calls wrapping up this day. A lot of news today. A lot of news. Yeah. How does a microwave work? It's a nuclear know. bomb, dude. Uh, okay. It's Zeta was told that answer one time. Mm -hmm. Which might be right. I assume there is some sort of no, that's not right truth to it. For yeah. real, though, it doesn't like it. How fast it can shut off, too. Like an oven, you know, it's going to stay warm. Microwave, obviously, you open the door and it's instantly not hot in there anymore. And how come everything else, yeah, isn't hot that's yeah. in there? Yeah. And that why is it only hit in spots? And they've been around forever, too. That's the other thing. Like, they, what you were, when were they invented? Well, what about the Foreman grill? Yeah. Oh. True. Why can't you put metal in the microwave? Well, because it's like You can, you can, you can, you can do it. <laughs> You just, I mean, you have to deal with the consequences. I mean, you can do anything, That's I guess. True. Is that what you're saying? You're a way to go, AJ. Uh, it's wait. like free speech. You can say whatever you want, but you do have to understand there are consequences sometimes. Is that right? That is right. That's like your guy. Who's my guy? We'll be back in four minutes. Uncle Waxy? No. <laughs> Cousin Bob. Mm. Aaron's neighbor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Who? Why is he? Why is he got a piece of raw land down there in Nashville? Who's Cousin Bob? Shut up. You know, you know who it is. Oh, that one. Gotcha. I really didn't. Okay. Yeah, you did. Hey, why, why? Is, Aaron, why is Aaron got a piece of land down in Nashville? Aaron think? may, he may own land in 15 different states. I honestly don't know. What states? Raw. You do know. I know he likes, he likes like the whole Montana, Idaho, that oh, whole yeah. area. Oh, that's Broncos. He likes that, yeah, that's like Broncos California. Broncos. Yeah, but does he have a house up there or is it raw land? Is he running for office? Make sure he cooks what? that land too before he eats it. Land, land, not lamb. What's that about? I don't think he has any livestock. No. Let's get to a break. We'll be back in four minutes uh, here on the worst show ever. <laughs> see you in four. Cheers. Thank you, AJ, for all your contributions today. You guys too. We'll see you in four minutes. <laughs> yes. My name is Evan Fox, and I am a Lions fan. Foxy loses. Biggest 
joke of a franchise ever, dude. Your team blows. Lions fucking stink. Oh, shut up, Fox. Lions fucking stink. The Lions fucking stink, Foxy. Get out of here. Get out of here with that Lions bullshit, Foxy. Lions fucking stink, bro. Foxy, dude. Download FanDuel Sportsbook. The Lions are 11 and 6 against the spread. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But hey, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make and no hard feelings. And uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton, last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady, you becoming friends with him. Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh, yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's house. <laughs> uh, so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish. And uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what's put the Bucks in this game today. And uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is. But uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was <laughs> 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the... Some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah! Hey, welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show here, wrapping up hour three on this, I mean, massive blizzard here in Indiana. Oh, yeah. Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. AJ, is it coming down out there? You said you're out on John Deere. You got uh, Daddy Daycare going on. Andrew on the John Deere over there, pal? Well, yeah, they canceled school yesterday early for today. I'm sure tomorrow will be. It's like it's been sleeting, hailing the whole time. I'm still waiting for the big snow to come. Okay, so that's yeah. what we had yesterday about 5 o'clock. It just started sleeting. We got home. We left here after hammered down. As we were driving, it was raining all day. As I was driving home, it was 34 degrees. Then it was 33 degrees. And as I was pulling my car in, it was 31 degrees. So it was like actual perfect, perfect timing time, yeah. getting home. But then it sleeted all night, basically until like 3 or 4 a.m. And then it just has been pissing snow out here. I mean, so the sleet was a nice base of the ice cake. Yeah. And then now the snow is on top of it. So we'll probably be wrapping this show up with... Not that long of an after hours, and I assume Hammer Down will come immediately after that. But the trip home, boys, I'd like everybody to be safe. Yeah, good luck out there, boys. You guys all have, like, don't you? A lot of you guys have trucks or bigger cars, Someone don't you? drive Foxy home. Yeah, we're out there wheeling, except for the kid <laughs> from worry. Michigan. Kids if you have a four wheel drive, I mean, honestly, don't worry. It's not Go out and but it live is your Ford. life. It's Ford. Oh, yeah, it is. Foxy, I can't. I mean, you live in the, you have the flattish 
uh, flattest shot back home, I guess, out yeah. of all of us. Indiana's pretty flat. I there's two cars that were, you know, going the wrong way up a hill or oh, 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 oh no, they were doing one of these. I grew up, you know, we we're talking about this actually. I grew up bottom of a hill of a hilly town. Okay, so anytime the snow came, it was always quite a scene because the way my road would go is past my my house, obviously, and then it would go up to like where Diggs lives up this way, and it was a pretty good hill. And then there was this other hill called Mardi Gras, and that some bitch was like. Straight up. So anytime snow started to come, it was appointment viewing of people that were going to be trying to get home up these things, just coming right down that some bitch sideways sometime. And then they would just try to go right back up it again. Yikes. And they're back. It's like, I don't know if you're going to make it. I don't know if you're going to make it. And most people didn't. Diggs actually just told me today what he used to have to do. And I never even thought about him potentially being one of the vehicles that I watched come back. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen that Hummer come back down. No, no, no. no this I never this seen was the Chrysler LHS. Yeah, the Chrysler, though. Yeah. yeah, potentially the Chrysler. He used to have to go all the way back around town almost to get to his house. It is a real son of a bitch if you don't have four wheels. Honestly, I hope everybody's safe out there. Yeah, it is. I mean, but you can. It, it is possible. I know a lot of people heard the news of all the storm coming, and they're scared to death and think they got to stay in their house for two days. Don't. Well, you know what? To be clear... I'm cool with the people who are scared of driving in the snow, staying the fuck out off the I roads. am too. Yeah. yeah. You, you know? Drive, yeah. There was somebody today driving this morning that I was behind. I was like, this person should not be on. They, they had zero fear. These people had no fear for the snow either. It was like, you It's usually are. the other way around. Usually, yeah, yeah, I agree. Usually. I agree. This morning, I saw somebody that I was driving behind. I'm like. Good for them. Hey, eventually it's going to run into a tree. Yeah. But hey, keep or it going. Off the side of the highway. <laughs> well, and then I would be. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a guy who zoomed by me going about 80 on 70. I was like, this, You're dead. This guy's got a death wish. You are hey. dead, dude. Phil, More CFO, power to him. CFO Phil used to. He had this little roller skate of a car, too. Yeah, he did. <laughs> this little fucking thing. And he drove. He Snow would pop up and he just. Oh, this is clean roads, basically. He would drive this thing around. It was insane. I mean, he did meet his comeuppance one night whenever no way. some black ice <laughs> appeared. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that did happen. I mean, he did have his comeuppance, but he was safe. Everybody was okay. The car was okay. Everything was good. But some people, I, I think you shouldn't, you shouldn't be scared to death, but there should be a nice respect level yeah. of oh, yeah. the oh, snow. Self-awareness. Well said. I think there should be a nice respect level. Well I, I honestly believe that. Yeah, and absolutely. You have to understand, like, yeah, this is, this is real. Like, I have to pay attention. Yeah, and put that thing in neutral when you're going downhills. Okay. You didn't know That's that? smart. Yeah, because the when it's in drive, you're, you're naturally putting power to your wheels. So even if you're not hitting the gas, your wheels are still getting a little bit of a ha ha ha. So mm. if you're going down here, going in a turn, I was always taught by Tim, former truck driver, put that some bitch in neutral so that there's no power going at all to your wheels. You're kind of just, you know, like a bobsled so gliding around. Gravity. There. Don't panic. If you start sliding, don't panic. That's the first thing. Just go with it. Yeah, slam yeah. the brakes. Turn <laughs> that thing sideways. Right. Do that entire. Most people do panic immediately, though. Yeah. Yeah. I love a nice little, I mean, obviously, I did it in my front yard for a long time, but I love a nice little fishtail. Oh, you know, drift. Like drift. We're talking about this one. And then I hit a little pothole, and all of a sudden, Mr. Mm -hmm. Tree said hello to Shelby, and, oh, you know, yeah. kind of scared me a little bit. But this morning, I... I I turned that some bitch sideways a couple times. Oh, yeah. Ooh, aviators got a little bit, got a little juice around this thing. But once again, I did it safely. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it on purpose. Thank Six you. point harness. Well, when you're holding the ball? No, in your car, in your uh, your new aviator. Oh, yeah, I always wear my seatbelt. That's something everybody knows about me. Mm -hmm. Do you still have your truck? Oh, yeah. I thought about oh. taking it, but that thing's jacked up. I didn't have any sand to throw in the back. Ooh, yeah, it'll, it'll slide on you. Yeah, so I wanted to keep with the aviator. The aviator is a little lower, but he sit a little higher. It actually performed very well. It performed very well this morning. I was proud of it. It was his first time, too. Yeah. And I thought maybe it was a little soft. You know, this thing's soft ass. It's out of fucking Michigan, you know. Whoa. That key. <laughs> this thing, yeah, and the, mm -hmm. the app thing didn't mm -hmm. work yeah. the day one. And I got that truck, you know, the truck probably meant for this type of condition, but I didn't have any sand to Should put in the back. Me. I'll lay in the back for you, though. There you go. It was too cold. <laughs> I did thank you. I did thank you. Let's go to the front. Well, that way back here. Let's go to Eric in Flint, Michigan. Let's go tropics. Let's get tropical. What do you want to talk about, Eric? What the fuck's up, boys? How we doing? Keep it moving. All right, you got okay. it. Oh, no. Hey, uh, hey Ty, right. you think Aaron's coming back? <laughs> yes, I do. Wrong. Hey, I sure hope so, man. <laughs> Good call. Hell yeah. God. <laughs> hey, me too. 
Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, Clint. Hey, Eric, you call back anytime. Uh, yes. You hear me, Eric? You call back anytime. Ty, I would like to know uh, further, a little follow-up on that. Do you think he's going back to the Packers? Yeah, I do. 100% in your heart, he's going back to the Packers. If somebody said, Ty, please put $1 million on what's going to happen, your actual money, you're saying he's going back to the Packers? Oh, I'm not putting a million bucks on him going back to the Packers. So you Definitely are conflicted. Not. But I think if it's pro- – I mean, why wouldn't you want to kind of see what it's, what's out there if it is poten- – if it could happen? But I think – he knows that if he's if he wants to win another Super Bowl, I think next year that's the with the Packers that's his best opportunity. AJ Hawk sniper with a three oh five about fifty yards away from you right at your fucking massive head. He shoots if you get this wrong. Aaron going back to the Packers, you think? Well, I don't, I don't deal in hypotheticals like that. You know that I've told you many many times. How do you know it's hypothetical? If um, if I had to choose, yeah, if you're making me pick, where do I think he goes? I said I don't think he retires right now. And I think the Packers give him the best chance to win it all. So I would assume the highest percentage t- chance would be the Packers. So hypothetically right there, you're standing there and you're saying, yeah, he's going back to the Packers. Yeah, I guess. Or Tennessee, you know, because of this whole land. What's your problem? Why is he always going to do that? I don't know. Why are you always going to do What about the Colts? Uh, yeah, the Colts too, though. But they aren't they, you know, they got to make some magic happen, don't they, with the picks they don't have and all of the different things? Yeah, they're There's tied to an picks, anchor. Dude. Are you kidding me? You Jim Marce has got so many drums and guitars. That Carson's fuck- getting like $50 million, isn't he? No, that's only the dead cap, actually. He's getting more like 40 but... Okay, but we got drums, guitars. We got a sure. lot of stuff we can yeah. send up to Green Seriously. Bay. Yeah. yeah, but you are tied to an anchor. Your ship is sinking. Carl Lentz does not deserve his No, he doesn't. Yeah, well, kind of, I mean, he did play. I mean, this is what comes whenever you're a $100 million quarterback in the NFL on a team that didn't make the playoffs. This is expected, by the way, these yeah. types of conversations. He told you it makes him stronger when he was sitting there. Yeah, he, he hears he everything. Take it. Then he, also nah, said he, hear he doesn't it. hear any of it. You, you can't oh, lose to the Jags <laughs> in the last game and not expect to get sawed down. If he wants to make it up to the good folks at Indy, he'd be out there plowing the roads right now. But Not that Bobcat. Yeah. But, yeah. He's a I, would, I would like to let everybody know that our mayor did say he thought about salting it, mm-hmm. but you know when it's wet, you can't salt it because it washes the salt away, and there's going to be a rainstorm for 48 hours before the snowstorm. So we decided to kind of hold the, the salt back. Yeah. That did yeah. not happen. Yeah, yeah, it did. Damn you, Oxen. Yeah, the rain. It did not. Came with the rain. Yeah. I don't know about the exact wordage, and I might have been wrong, but <laughs> that sounds right. It did. That does feel like what you he sold it. Done. You sold it well. No, that actually kind of what he's. I mean it. It's kind of what he said because he was very <laughs> – that's very true, by the way. What he said – I've been doing a similar thing with my front steps. I've put salt on a few times. I'm like, is this stupid bro. because it keeps raining? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, because you're supposed to put salt down before the ice and the snow. Yeah. It's supposed to be there. I did, to, though. No, I no. did, and then it rained on it. Yeah, exactly. But the rain does okay. kind of just wash, wash that shit down. away, yeah. which is what the mayor was trying to say. Hey, we will salt this, but we want to let you know the 72-hour rainstorm that's coming right before this – is not our friend when no. it comes to salting this entire thing. And so he actually made some valid points, but mm. it, it let us all know that lucky. this whole thing's going to be fucking ice. It's yeah. going to be a uh, this is going to be a, uh, a, a cake from uh, Blizzard. Uh, cake boss, uh, Dairy Queen, buddy, uh, buddy Velastro, no uh, Cold Stone. Cold Stone. Yeah. It's going to be a cold ice cream cake. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be an ice cream cake out there yeah. on those roads. For sure. And I don't know if it's his choice or not, but it certainly <laughs> was interesting that they didn't have any. They didn't have the plows get out on the highways this morning. They just let the cars kind yeah, of do so that. I was they told he there. doesn't plow <laughs> until it stops snowing. I was behind the. They do really? the, the one here. One. They Bro, do the staggered guy, approach. I was this guy does him. a lot. I mean, he's a politician, so I guess he's got to do a lot. But damn you, Hawkset. Gumpy and I actually I were that. driving home yesterday, and you could see the salt trucks, but they weren't dropping any salt. Oh, that's what old uh, guy in Pittsburgh. I've seen this yeah. truck parked down at the bottom <laughs> oh, of the hill. Yeah, yeah. If he could just leave the keys, I'd fucking do it for him. Yeah. What's that, Bill? As someone who's lived in Indiana their whole life, it's uh, it was a normal thing where you see everyone in their pickup trucks with the snow plows, but you don't see any of the plow trucks out. Well, yeah, so for instance, this morning, uh, my realtor, good guy, Jeff, he shows up in my house this morning with a Bronco, with chains on the tires, with the whole thing. Oh. He's like, when we get your driveway? I'm like, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would, would like you to get to my weapon. So he comes and then he hit the road a little bit. Wow. He goes into Jeez. the next one. That's awesome. That should happen more often, I think. I, I think that should be the. We can't rely, okay? No. On this, not just here. 
And I'm not going to get this any further than this. Uh oh, no, you're talking big picture here. No, like I'm not. No, oh. I'm not. I am Titan right yeah, on this, this snow. This, this ties everything together that's been going on, right? No, we should not feel as if we should rely on, you know, potential others to okay. make the decisions that you're are talking about the federal government. Or who are you talking no, about? Well, not whoa, whoa, state, whoa. city. I don't know who's in charge talking about the snow. I don't know who's in charge of the plowing, but I will echo the sentiment of what everybody else said. There was not a single ounce of any plowed roads this morning nope. that we drove in. We all knew this storm, uh, this storm was coming, so I don't know when you're supposed to do it. I assume they have a reason, by the way. They have a reason for what they're doing. I just don't know if Jeff, who has a full-time job and is very successful, should be the guy with, that we should just be banking on. But I think we need more of Jeff's out there. I think we need more, you know, uh, big-ass trucks ready mm -hmm. to just move snow yeah hell yeah That's or at least talking. get a couple fucking deer gators out here you know and let shit i'll i'll fucking drive around the city streets and get rid of them you maybe know? that'll yeah. be a donation i make to the state just a oh, bunch of deer oh, hell front. yeah we saw hell a couple yeah. we saw a couple you can make a lot of cash you gotta you gotta side by side put a plow on it drive around every neighborhood you can make a lot of cash a lot of kids should be doing that obviously those are expensive to get so that's rich kids getting more money no i'm saying i'm not saying a kid i'm saying now if you're a kid you walk around with a shovel and you knock on the door yeah, I concur, but okay. there's not kids doing that. I don't, I don't think nope. that's happening modern not day. Anymore. Welcome to the modern world. Not it should be. I don't yeah. think that's... By the way, I'm not shoveling snow either right now, so I can't be well. judging any of these kids. But if you're a kid, probably have a lot of money to make because... Why don't they just do all the streets, too, these little kids? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Just start running. Just start running. Yeah, put it right in your chest, mm -hmm. dude. Run with it just <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah. Low, That'll be good. Yeah, low pads. I mean, Axel better be, you know, out in the driveway right now, AJ, or else you're kind of a shitty dad. What if we have this John Deere set up like... Um, uh, like lime scooters. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty good. Idea. So you show yeah. up, you have to scan it in and you rent yeah. it for a certain yeah. time and then it's tracked so we know where it's at. We can just drop like four on every single block. Yeah. 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 Or you don't rent them. It's like a timesheet and you get paid for doing it actually because yeah. they're, you know, you're helping the community in the city. See, this is private companies taking care of public situations. Yes. That's right. American people. All right. We'll do that for next year. Yeah. Hell yeah. So Write that down, AJ. Monday. Yeah, I will. You're like a. Like Kardashians, they hired their own firefighters when those fires were going on out there in Malibu, right? They did. That, yeah. I don't think they were the only ones. I think there was a lot of people. No, there was more, were. but yeah. But that did happen, yeah. Were they retired? Where do you, where do you find them? Well, that's what I'm saying. Were they retired? Maybe the they were the, station. like, you know, there's always volunteer firefighters. Maybe they were volunteers that weren't volunteering that day. We grew up down the road from a volunteer fire department. Anytime you hear that siren, woo! And then you see some son of a bitch coming down the hill with a blue light on top of their Bronco. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. They're going to save the world right there. They were heading right to the Kardashians. That's what you're saying? I mean, I, I know was, people were doing that out there when they're trying to protect their houses. Yeah. Like contract killers. Well, you must protect this house. Let's go to Walker in South Kakalaka. What's going on, dude? Click What's up, man? What's up, dude? I uh, just wanted to chat a little bit about the Jaguars head coaching situation. There's uh, some reports coming out um, saying that Shad Khan interviewed head coaching candidates and asked them what they thought about Trent Baalke with Trent Baalke in the room with them. Oh, Walker, thank you for bringing up that point. Yeah, I guess it's going to be tough for them just to bury a guy <laughs> who is alongside the owner who you're trying to get a job from. This is the classic, like, uh, when people assume that you are attached to something, they're not going to necessarily bury it if they don't know you. For instance, we have these chairs that got brought into this office <laughs> for the igloo. Yep. There you go. For the igloo. There's like 10 uh, of these chairs, okay, that come into the office. And all of a sudden, these companies that are representing these chairs come in and they ask Connor right to his face, yeah. hey, what do you think of this piece of shit chair, basically, that we have? Connor goes, oh, it's great. It's, it's great. Good chair. And then Connor yeah. walks away. The chair is not great. The chair stinks. And then it happens from another company comes in and they look at Diggs. They're like, what do you think of this chair that seems as if it took us 20 hours to put together and is everything, it's all of our ideas. Diggs goes, oh, I love that chair. Yeah, and then Diggs it. just walks away. Diggs hated that chair. But he wouldn't say it because the person that built the chair was right there. Then I get all of a sudden into a situation where I have to go through these blueprints and these designs and they have these terrible fucking chairs in place. I'm like, why is this chair here? Has anybody said it's good? Oh, the boys said the chair was great. I said, to who? Well, to us. Well, they're going to fucking lie to you because they think you made the chair. They're like, well, it'd be better if the truth was told. I was like, I agree. We should have a third party maybe ask the boys. This is what's happening down in Jacksonville is what Walker is saying is potentially taking place with Bulky in the room.
I guess is Shad Khan though? Is he waiting for somebody to separate themselves and just trash Bulky right there while he's in the room? And then Shad's gonna wake up and go, oh, "This is this is what I've been waiting for. Well, I want someone to not pander to me." Well, allegedly, right? That's what Byron Leftwich did, right? That's what everybody is. is it? I mean, allegedly, but Byron Leftwich was also the head coach of the Jags there for a couple of days, and he's no longer the head coach of the Jags. His only uh, holdup was he did not like Bulky. He wanted Adrian Wilson in there from the Arizona Cardinals. That was almost a done deal. So maybe Byron Leftwich, Shad Khan goes, what do you think of my guy here? They're dressing up like him like a clown, and they're calling it clown town because he's here. What do you think? What if Byron Leftwich is like, the guy's fucking sorry. Yeah. All right, I don't know how to break to you. The guy stinks. Okay, well, that'll be the end of this meeting. Thank Get you out. so much. All right. Yeah. And then Shot has to know that's a possibility, though. If you're doing that, if you're asking the question with the guy in the room, he has oh. to know, like, this is possible. How uncomfortable is that question even? Uh, for Balky, too. Uh, really weird for him. Yeah, but he doesn't give a fuck. He probably thinks he doesn't deserve a job either. <laughs> yeah, how can you hire Urban Meyer and, like, be part of that decision and still be, it, like, the general manager? That was possibly the worst hire. That was Shod, though. That was Shod, wasn't it? Well, it was shot from the Illinois Big Ten Conference years yeah. and years yeah. and but years ago. But he was ago. the GM. So Balky had to co-sign it, but I believe that was a Shad Khan signing. I wonder... Sounded like Shad was in love with Urban for a while, a while, like wanting to bring him there, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was asking for his advice on who he should hire, and then Urban ultimately said, come by the chop house. We'll hit the dance floor, do a couple shots, throw up some finger guns, what? and maybe I'm the guy for you in the end. And Shad said, bingo. Let me put him on a tiny jet, fly him down mm -hmm. to Duval, sign him to be our head coach, and then all hell's going to break loose. I'll I'll commit to investing like $50 billion to build up this entire part of the city for us. Urban will be the guy that will change the culture. And he's not going to be elite. He's going to be on the edge. Oh, That's yeah. how this is going to go. And it all went to shit. So maybe Balky's getting thrown in with a terrible decision that was made by Shad. But also maybe Shad Khan has unrealistic views on what NFL coaches maybe would like to be a part of and would not be a part of. And although he has a bunch of money, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to have success. Hopefully they get it figured out down there. But if Aaron Rodgers is going to the AFC South, he hopes Shad Khan and Balky are still clown time. Yep. Yeah, I guess so. Don't you have a hard out here coming up? Listen, you always geez, do this. Pal. Let, listen. Anything you'd like to say to the, the beautiful listeners of Mad Dog Show, Pat? Hey, thank you so much for listening today. All right, we'll be back in about 21 hours. It might take us 20 hours to get home today <laughs> yeah. because of the blizzard. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. Big shot. Big shout out to Coach Lou, Aaron Ruma, Chuck Pagano, Mark Wahlberg, AJ Hawk, and all the boys. We'll see you tomorrow for a Feel Good Friday. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Wow. It was it. Yeah. And you let me, Mark. Let me. Nah, no, 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 cheers. Oh, no, my club's stuck in between the wall. Oh, the Jesus. Table. Oh, no. <laughs> I apologize. I was not here the day the chairs were demoed. I would have uh, spoken the truth openly and honestly. I mean, you don't have no idea how much shit that. Uh, I mean. Yeah, because they say, uh, sit down. No, well, no here's no, what sit. confuses me. I thought we had the conversation about the chairs, and we, as we, you asked us, hey, which one do you like? And we told you which ones we like, and you yeah. agreed on which ones we like, and you told them, hey, we like these ones. Yeah, and I sent I sent pictures of three of the mm -hmm. ten. Yeah. Hey, we like this one, and then all of a sudden I go to the follow up meeting. There's seven of the ten all there, all around. I'm like, why? I thought we only liked three. Oh, well, when we were there, the boys said that they liked this one and this one and this one. I'm like, they lied to you. <laughs> Every time they asked me, I just said undecided. So it was the alligator like the fifth, one. dude? <laughs> from from the, the fifth, beginning. Undecided. Yeah, like, there's only one chair, yeah. really, that yeah. we yeah. used. Yeah, it was just that one. Boom, this one's the one. Yeah. Get 80 of those. Whatever the case, that's what Shad's doing. Shad's doing, hey, you like this guy? He seems to be pretty good. He's sitting right at my desk with me. Been here for a huh? while. Maybe he's Why is waiting it for so long? someone to say, no, fuck that guy, and then that's who he's going to hire. That's what AJ yeah. said. But that reminded me of what Rupp said last night when Rupp was trying to make it in the hockey world. He said, you got to do something to either get on the score sheet or to uh, make waves or whatever. That would be a great way to make waves. Nah, that guy fucking stinks. I don't mm -hmm. want him right in front of his face. Shot would be like a little initiative right in front of somebody's face. Wow. I like that. What Rupper uh, decided to do was uh, fight Mike Messier. Mark, Mark Messier. Yeah. Sorry, Mark Messier. Sorry, Moose. I apologize. That's <laughs> on me. Mark Messier. Uh, he was a 40-year-old brawler, and he was going to fight him because it was a preseason game. And then he got about an inch away from Messier, and he decided better. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take a regular ass 
Thank you so much. Yeah, that's probably face off. Yeah, probably smart. smart <laughs> probably smart. Move. One of the more. Uh, but yeah, that is something that could draw a little attention. You know, garner some eyes if you did something. Why like haven't it. they hired anybody yet? What, are they waiting for? Is, are they going to hire somebody off of one of the uh, the Super Bowl staffs or what? What are what, we doing? Yeah, that's what Chuck said, right? Chuck said maybe some of these teams have some people locked in from these Super Bowl teams. Maybe Raheem Morris, who was the interim, obviously down in Atlanta, he gets he could get an opportunity to be a head coach. He was who, head coach of the Bucks. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Coach Richie just interviewed with the Jags as well. They need a culture. They need. What they about need Jim Caldwell? What happened Jim, to Jim Caldwell? They need Jim Caldwell. Yeah. What did happen to Jim Caldwell? Do you think Jim Caldwell maybe realizes that Shad Khan's a big dumb dipshit and good. has no idea what he's doing? Whoa! And he didn't want to go down there. He got a good mustache though. He great he mustache, does. no question Fantastic. about it. Better than Mark Wahlberg's mustache. Sure. Yeah. Shad Khan's. He's got. Um, I don't know what Mark's yacht looks like, but Shad Khan's yacht also. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's what Jim Caldwell did. He went down and interviewed and said, "All right, first things first, I'm gonna rip that fucking mustache off your face." They're and talking then about we'll clown. They're talking about clown town. What the fuck is on your face? Yeah, yeah. looks good. I that think it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. What do you it's put really little cool. like? Is there like mustache oil to make oh, it? Yeah. You know, oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I think point up like that. I think yeah, it's properly groomed. I think daily. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think that thing is. Bingo. Up daily. Nice scarf on, nice coat. I think he twirls it when he makes decisions. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. What do you think of bulky? <laughs> Love the guy. Guy created bumpers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gonna really? I might use them on the way home, huh? Yeah. Gonna need them. We say thanks to this guy. That's right. Thank you, Shad. All right, let's get out of here. Hammer Downs, what, right after this? Sure. We got to get out of here because there's snow falling, ice is happening. We got to get home so we can get back tomorrow. What's on tomorrow's show? Oh, feel good Friday, feel dude. Good yeah. Friday. We have anything sweet going on? Yeah. Olympics. What? What? That's right. That starts tonight. Good curling this morning. Wait, are there? Was there opening ceremonies? No, nah, there's some shit that's always before the opening. Ceremony. Yeah, I saw mm -hmm. some curling uh, going on yesterday. Is it Maddie fucking Hamilton? No, no yeah. mixed. There There's, were mixed yeah, last it was night. Men's and women's. I think it's yeah. 8 p.m. Uh, curling Maddie Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 8 p.m. more. Did he return? 6:30 a.m. Is so. it bad that they're happening and nobody knows? Wow, well, there's a whole mm. thing going on with the things. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah there's so. Are you empowering a thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's oh, also yeah, yeah. our athletes, you know, like I feel like we should at least represent for our athletes. You know, they're not, they've worked their entire fucking lives yeah. to get to this type of thing. But then there's the entire, you know, oh. much bigger picture thing going on. Where so is it? I'm a little bit. <laughs> you know what's <it's> that? <laughs> Maddie Hamilton this right. uh, February 9th, 7.05 in the hey. morning. Curling Maddie, Maddie Hamilton. Hamilton. It's in China, dude. He'll find oh. another goal, dude. Women's hockey team beat Finland. Woo! Yeah. Suck it, finish. Yeah, we're going all the way this year. Women's hockey team? And the Mets. By the way, women's hockey, fast. Oh, yeah. Fly, mm -hmm. fly. Hillary fly. Knight. I enjoy it every four years whenever it comes on. Phil Kessel's sister. Oh, also yeah. Nasty. yeah. Scores goals. Uh-huh. Who was that? Uh, there was uh, uh, a woman in the All-Star game last year. She did the shot thing from the oh yeah from the platform. She Hillary was, Knight. Yeah, Hillary Knight. That's her name? Mm -hmm. She's... She's it, huh? Yeah, she's nasty. We got the girls. We got the girls. Uh, Canada won 12 to 1. They are also quite good. Oh, so no, Canada no, but we were, we were trying. As well. That sounds like the miracle. <laughs> are they ice. even allowed to go? Are, are the Canadian <laughs> Olympic teams allowed to even go? Hell oh, yeah. that's a good question. No, you have to have a spine. <laughs> <laughs> Something you wouldn't know anything about. Oh! Thank you for the compliment that I've said about myself 30 times. Oh! Can't fire me. I quit, dude. <laughs> um, let's talk about Wait, who doesn't have a spine, Diggs? Me. And who the else? Canadians. Well, he said the Canadians. Oh, they're still paying, all the Canadians? Still paying taxes to a woman who's 112 years old. Oh, oh show some respect to the crime. Yeah. Well, which season? <laughs> <laughs> Two, True. obviously. I don't know. There was a couple that came in, and I was like, "That's not my queen." Season one was the best one <laughs> by far. That's the tough part about <laughs> some of these queen. shows. That's not my queen. Whenever they change the actress, yeah. that's not my queen. Is she not supposed to age? How does it work? No CGI. Why don't you Make film it, it over time? Place? Yeah, it worked for De Niro in that movie. That was cool. That movie yeah. was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. The Irishman. They gave him those shoes, too. Oh, yeah. He was walking down the, the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was in those uh, 
What are those Hawaiian shoes I would wear? Hoka. Because he was in those super hokas. Yeah. Let's talk about soccer real quick. We won three nothing. Obviously, yeah. it was negative Boom. ten degrees. Yeah, no big deal. Had to be. It, it actually, I think, is on record as being the coldest soccer game ever played in North America, for like any national stuff. Minnesota, uh, wind chill, negative. They're playing out there. Christian Pulisic didn't get to start. Got subbed in in the 65th minute. How you doing? Keep moving. Go in the 67th minute. <laughs> Three nothing. We beat the shit out of them boys from Honduras, and now a couple of them got hypothermia. Yeah, I sorry. assume there's going to be more. It was very. I mean, it was visibly cold out there. The only good thing, aside from America beating the dog shit out of Honduras, is the ref. The ref is maybe my favorite ref of all time. He was calling it very tight. A lot of calls early. Yeah. He had to deal with the cold, but he was very much letting everybody know. Hey, listen, I don't have time for your shit. In. Spanish, English, yeah, whatever you're speaking. I, I'm, they're reviewing it right now. I love the ref. Big fan of the operation. And America's going to win uh, soccer Lombardi, dude. Oh, Bring yeah. Pulisic in off the bench. I don't care. If whatever reason he can't start and be good, all good. Bring him in off the bench. He scores within the first two minutes. We're winning the soccer Lombardi oh, yeah. in Qatar. Can't wait. Hey, we're right. both. We're both heading to Qatar. It's all all's good in the world, my friend. Who? Canada, U.S. Listen, you guys don't want to be in our group. Be no, no we group death. Me? Yeah, yeah. Death. I hope we get One those freaking death. cupcakes in our you, group. You know, yeah. Give us Canada, Spain, sure. Portugal, and Germany. Beat you two nothing without Fonzie, dude. Oh, oh hey. that's a different team, dude. Yeah, yeah. fucking throwing Molson team. triple X's at our boys before yeah. we fucking yeah. play. Yeah, it was in Hamilton. It was on <laughs> it championship was on Sunday. Sunday. Come on, yeah. our boys are watching the games. Watching we all know football. it's coming home, anyways. It is coming yeah. home. You're right, America. America to the United States. What happens when they play in warm weather climates? Like much better. Beat the hell out of everybody. I think everybody on our team. I mean, I guess Christians from like Hershey, and there's probably guys from Jersey, and there's cold weather guys. But I think all soccer players are very okay with going to the yeah. warm weather to play. Yeah. So the United States choosing to play the game in negative degree weather is awesome. I in this ref, <laughs> full mood. This yeah. guy need more of those. Need more of this type of. He needs to get into the NFL. He was very. He was explaining things to people with his gestures, not even words. He called it very fair, stern, but fair. fair. Love what he did. Canada's making it in. Top of the table, my friend. Is this a concat con concave? Con Mexico yeah. scored a penalty in the 80th, which would have been huge for both of us. Stupid. Well, Stupid. But good news is there's Damn no. I, I know we have these issues going on with uh, China and the Olympics. There's no issues with Qatar, is there? No, it's good <laughs> to go, dude. Stadiums are ready. All right, that's, that's a show. A few fallen soldiers. Sorry for that. A few. A few. I mean, there Hundred, are 10,000 people buried under no, the state. 10,000? Yeah. Are you kidding me? The fucking population of the entire state of Iowa is underneath that Qatar Stadium. Probably Dude, true. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking. What's the deal? Why the hell? Put, put it there, John Wayne Gacy. Oh. He's been dead for a long time. Yeah, but yeah. he is Waterloo Iowa. guy. Yeah. 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 Man of the year. All right, let's get to a 20 oh, okay. one hour break. We'll be back tomorrow with Feel Good Friday. Yeah. And I'm off to Oklahoma City. Ooh, Timothy. Nice. Here we go. Timothy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do not make T I M there. It oh. is great to be in Oklahoma City tonight. <laughs> Sean McVay, Timothy McVay, <laughs> who gives a damn? <laughs> we are it's gonna in. Slip out. It's going to slip out. <laughs> I uh, wouldn't recommend it. Who gives a damn? We need to get all those out right now. We need to get all those out. <laughs> I can't make any of those references on SmackDown either, let alone yeah. the McAfee Minute. You won't. But You won't. You're good. You got it. You never like that. That won't happen. Yeah. I'm really good at that. Just I won't text you. I, I'll text you beforehand and remind you not to Do say. not show up in my phone. All right? You were already doing enough at the Royal I Rumble. I might FaceTime you. You're already doing enough at the Royal Rumble. Him dropping things into my brain oh. before the Royal oh, Rumble. Please. Just Can't so toxic. Don't need it. You hear me? Don't. Toxic. What do you, I ask genuine questions about wrestling when I, when I watch what you do. All right. We'll keep them coming. I love informing people and yeah. stuff. That's Don't bring up people. David Koresh. He's from Oklahoma City? No, that was like the response to for the Oklahoma City bombing was because of the division, whatever that was called. Division. The who? Branch Davidians? Yeah. yeah. Timothy McVeigh was answering Davidians? He was a part of that, yeah. He was a part of the Davidians? Yeah, it was like was a, really? supposed to be a, a, yeah. What about Jonestown, right? That's Ooh, the, the don't drink the Kool-Aid. What state Kool is that? Are they from? Is that Washington? Different country. State? Yeah, it was. No, that was in a different country, but they're from America. Yeah. They moved there. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know what they didn't. They, didn't he bring him from all over, really, though? Yeah, but where is he from? Indiana, I think. Oh, is he? Oh, Timothy Jim McKay Jones? went to Waco to witness the standoff between the federal agents and the branch Davidians. Oh, so we don't know if it's because of that. He's just mad at the government. There from... are some thoughts that that inspired him. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You just stick to I read the paperwork. I'll, I'll stay away from Stick Timothy. to Oklahoma yeah. City Thunder. You can just yeah, bury yeah, Westbrook yeah. and Kevin Durant. Yeah, yeah, they got smart. this rookie that they love Hard. down there. They got that coach from uh, Florida. Billy Donovan. Yeah. I think he... Is not nah, Billy there. Donovan is not there anymore. He's Shit. I don't know who the coach is either. I thought it was Sam Presti's there. the owner. Man, that's an awesome place. They got oh, this kid, yeah. Josh Giddy from Australia. Oh, they love him. Hey, giddy. he's a ball player. He is yeah. a ball player. They're giddy about him. Yeah. Boom. That's good. That is good. There's no way Timothy McVeigh will slip out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the show. I need to get that out of me tonight. I need to say as many Timothy McVeigh references as possible. <laughs> Jim Jones. Jim Jones from Indianapolis. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah I thought no. so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. That's a shame. Oh, not balling? No, that's no. that's that's different, Jim Jones. Okay. We've got uh, no lie. lie. You know this. Boys! Everybody, everybody is throwing their hands up like this. Yeah. What about June Jones? He wasn't afraid to throw that ball. Over no, he's the not. Oh, he's a good football coach. coach. Great coach, coach to white. Good ball coach. Just like uh, Lou Anaruma. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Chuck Pagano. And Mark Wahlberg, thank you all so much. Have a great day. We'll see you in the audience. Be safe out there, people. Hammer downs in like five minutes. Be safe. Bye.